hello everyone welcome welcome in i hope you guys had a lovely weekend or you guys were having a good night or day wherever you may be welcome back everyone hello um i hope you guys had a lovely weekend um mine was okay i'm gonna be honest unfortunately today is monday so you know your girl your girl's in the future apparently so um my fucking hot water heater should it's on so that's lovely for me also um well not also but so like i can't really take like hot showers so anytime like the dishes are like having to be washed i have to have to use fucking cold water which you know, it is what it is i guess um but i hope you guys are having a good day or night wherever you may be um today we're gonna continue with dream daddy we're gonna continue with dream daddy i'm so excited like for real this game has been living in my mind like rent free since we since we stopped playing it. Luckily, I can stream a little bit longer tonight because Hubs wants to play Boulder's Gate. <laughs> I mean, I want to play Boulder's Gate too. Don't get me wrong, but um, I get to play Dream Daddy. I get to play Dream Daddy. So I hope you guys are ready. Hope you guys are excited for me to be judging all these motherfuckers tonight. I don't want to like load it up because every freaking time that I load up this freaking thing, it will, it will like automatically play the music and I'm like, mm, skirt, skirt, no, nah, can you not? Thanks, bro. So we're gonna play some Dream Zady. I'm kind of excited. I don't know why the fuck I'm so excited about this shit, man. Like. <laughs> It's so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad that I like this game so much. Oh my god. Oh my god. This fucking game. Um, so I got some I had to go get some water because um this game does require a lot of reading. So hopefully um hopefully we'll get in we'll get into some good story tonight because i'm kind of excited to know what the fuck is up with this story and to know who's gonna be my dream zady i don't know why the fuck i'm excited shit yo this is just a bop dream daddy okay all right, we ain't gonna get crazy with it, but I just wanted to make sure that, you know, we're all good. Check my sand settings. Why does it go through that? You know, whatever, we'll figure it out. Gallery, what do we have in the gallery? Nothing, what do we have in his options? Oh. Any games. Um, that's the only options we have, and that's the only thing that we have in the gallery. We don't have any mini games. All right, fuck it. Oh yeah, we freaking um. We stopped at the cookout. Ooh, always bring a war chest. Why? Oh my God. Okay. Let's see. Let's talk to Matt, Hugo, and Craig. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in the intense, an intense discussion. Craig looks on smiling, smiling politely. 
I waved over to say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. Periods in art only exist because they are a unique byproduct of social and political climate of a time and place. And to try and take something like, say, the Rococo, what? Rococo period. And compare it to postmodernism in America. You're completely disregarding the context in which a work of art is created. Matt and Hugo seem to be so busy talking that they don't even notice me. Craig leans in. Dude, I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> I turn my attention to Craig, who seems a little bit more attentive to my existence. How'd resistance training go the other day? Right. Little River here is great she litter. Aren't you tiny, bro? Craig grabs River's arms and waves them around. You can do it, Dad. I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry for pooping on you. <laughs> she must be a handful at that age. Oh, they always are. But it's so worth it. Craig grabs River's arm again and waves him around. I'm also sorry for throwing up on you, Dad. How you settling in? <laughs> mm, almost done. Uh, there's still a few odds and ends to take care of before I can call myself settled but i think we can upgrade the situation to livable we did livable throughout the entirety of college yeah my goal was for amanda to live the sort of life that did involve eating spoonfuls of ranch dressing as a palate cleanser between different types of pizza <laughs> what ew she still does though ew hey she takes after her dad Aaron, how are you liking the neighborhood it's pretty nice everyone's been super friendly Seems like your daughter's fitting in just fine. Matt points across the yard where Amanda, Daisy, and another young girl are playing. They're all sitting cross-legged in the grass, picking weeds and weaving them into little flower crowns. It's pretty adorable. The girl I don't recognize jogs over to us. Oh, cute. What is this, sweetheart? It's a flower crown. Well, there's only one way to find out. Matt takes the flower crown and places it on top of his head. Am I cool now? The girl stares at him, thinking it over. Mm, nope, but you're still, but you're slightly less uncool than you were before, before you, before you put it on. <laughs> hey, Aaron, this is my daughter. Hello. I'm Carmencita. Amanda comes over with a daisy in tow. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Are you making friends? You better be making friends. Yeah, actually, Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and uh, your teacher? Oh, hi, Mr. Vega. I didn't rec realize we were neighbors. Yup. You still gonna get me that overdue term paper? Ah, great seeing you. Amanda finger guns her way out of the conversation like a champ. <laughs> she learned the finger guns move from me. I'm very proud. She def she's definitely a charmer. Speaking of which, where'd my son go? Hugo looks around the party. He must finally, oh, he, he must finally, what? He must finally spot him because, oh, fuck, I didn't. Fuck it. Ernest, Ernest Hemingway Vega, are you smoking? Ernest is holding a lit cigarette. Nope. I see Ernest across the way. He casually takes a long drag of cigarette and then flicks it in the gutter. Unbelievable. Excuse me. <laughs> Hugo marches over to Ernest, and I turn my attention to Matt and Craig. Kids, right? Man, I do not envy Hugo. The last barbecue we had, Ernest tried to shove a sparkler down Joseph's pants. Nearly burned down half the yard. And the barbecue we had before that, he actually burned down half the yard. And then it spread to my lawn and then burned half of my yard, too. Hugo walks, <laughs> walks back over to us, practically dragging Ernest behind him. Hey, everyone. Sorry about that. Aaron, this is my son, Ernest. Hello. Ernest looks away, sulking, and his hand shoves deep in his pockets. Hugo nudges him impatiently. Hey. Nice to meet you, Ernest. What grade are you in? Does it matter? Ernest? Okay, okay, okay. I'm in eighth grade. Are you happy now? I'm sure you were just dying to know. Eh, yeah, good for you. Can I go now? I'm talking to old dudes who blame my generation for the falling economy. Ouch. Ernest? Oh, yeah, because I'm totally embarrassing you. Ernest puts his earbuds in and storms off and stands in the corner. Well, that was certainly something. <gasps> Hi, Carm. <sighs> Seems nice. 
Hugo puts his head, hand, head in his hands and sighs. I'm so sorry. He's having a really rough time. As much as I want to be the cool dad, I have to be the authoritarian dad and he clearly resents me for it. I mean, I think as a dad and a teacher, that's about as authoritarian, authoritarian, authoritarian as you can get. Goodness. Yeah, words are hard. Honestly, are any of us cool dads? Is it even possible to be a cool dad? What? I'm as cool as a cucumber. See? That right there. You can't say that. My kids think I'm cool. But for how long, Craig? How long do we get to be the cool dads? I, uh, I don't know. I think we just have to accept the fact that as dads, we've become the machine we once ragged against and accept our fate to unironically wear socks with sandals. Your kids may think you're cool now, but in the moment they hit puberty, you're doomed. Amanda's 18. She still thinks I'm cool. I yell across the yard to my daughter. Amanda, I'm cool, right? Amanda just laughs. She keeps laughing. I see your point. As much as we all want it, I don't think it's important to be a, to be a cool dad as much as a good dad. We, can, we can't all be best friends with our kids. It just doesn't work. I mean, look at me in earnest. Our job as parents is to make our kids turn out okay. Yeah, you're right. But I'd at least like to have, it'd be nice to have it both ways. Hearing these guys talk about this makes me think of my relationship with Amanda. We get along so well, but there might come a time when it won't be like that. It's college when that happens. Don't let us eat up your time, Aaron. Go meet some other people around the neighborhood. God, they talk so fucking much. <gasps> Hi, Barry. What up? I like cucumbers. I fucking love cucumbers. They're delicious. Who's Robert and Brian? Oh, God, these guys fuck. I glanced across the yard and noticed Robert and Brian chatting over drinks. Man, I don't want to, I don't think I want to deal with being one-upped by Brian or whatever happened with Robert last night. Oh no, they caught me staring. Fuck. Brian's waving over at me. Shoot. I flash a smile and walk over to them. Hey, guys. Aaron, how the heck are ya? Settling into the neighborhood, all right. You betcha. I got the living room in order, at least. That's great to hear. Been doing some living room work as well. Finally got that 50 inch in there. Game looks great on high def. Oh boy. Aaron, have you met Robert yet? Yeah, we've met. Robert regards me over his whiskey. Good seeing you again. We were just talking about my most recent camping trip. Spent a night in the woods with Daisy and Maxwell. She's definitely an outdoorsy one. Even caught her first fish. It's good to see you taking your daughter out like that. I bet she loved it. And it's great that she loves the outdoors. Mine loves being inside. <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> Brian raises his eyebrows at me. Being inside, making art. She won a local art, local competition for that art. Yep. Did I put it on too strongly? Robert stares at me blankly for a second. Ooh, anyway, I haven't gone camping in years. Not since the last time. Same here. Well, things change once you have. Wait, what happened that last time? Robert takes a long sip of whiskey. Well, old Johnny Boy and me were out in the back country. Johnny Boy's a strong kid, met him in my army days, comes from Kansas. They build him tougher out there. What? That? What? In what fucking world? Okay. In, anyway, things go south pretty quick. Johnny Boy breaks his ankle and then a rope. Then with what? When the rope bridge snaps? How do you break your ankle? Okay. It's fine. Whatever. I'm just... I'm just here, bro. You can see the bone popping out through the skin. Johnny boy screaming now, screaming for his mama, losing blood for two days out from the next living soul. And here I am with my dear friend bleeding out in front of me. I'm able to dress the room, but now I got a fireman carry a six foot, 180 pound man over some of the toughest terrain I've ever been in. I won't lie to you. There's the, there were moments during those two days when I thought about leaving old Johnny boy. But you build a bond with your brothers in arms, and that bond never breaks. I got a boy back to, I got that boy back to civilization, and I lost some of me out there. I guess that's camping for you. Brian and I stare in disbelief. Robert takes another long sip of whiskey. I'm just kidding. My friend John and I went inner tubing down a river, and he lost a flip flop. Missed that kid. What the fuck? Just say. Oh my. Brian and I laugh nervously. <laughs> the fuck. Or am I kidding? Bitch, get the, f get the fuck out of here. Brian and I tense up again. I'm kidding. Whew. 
Abandon Daisy barrel up to us laughing. Daisy's holding a paper plate in front of her like a steering wheel. We gotta get off this haunted truck. Oh no, the ghost locked the doors. Quick, hit the emergency escape button. But trucks don't have emergency escape buttons. Uh, then uh, hit the right, I guess. And then we'll get another truck. The imaginary truck. Anyways, we're safe from the ghosts, but how will we ever survive the Arctic tundra? Daisy, you might have to eat me. Are you prepared to do that? I'm prepared to do anything to survive. That's cold-blooded. I like that. <laughs> That's such a me thing to say. Barry, this kid is totally like you. Like, um, if if she's not like me, she's definitely like you. Although, I'm not sure I have the materials required to properly cook you. You know, that reminds me of the last time I went skiing. Robert? Wait a second. Are you guys playing long haul rice ice road paranormal ghost truckers? Yeah. Amanda and I love that sh so show. It's the best, especially the episode where Callum hides Flint's keys and Flint retaliates by breaking an ancient cursed urn and sending that spirit after him. Yeah, it's such a quality reality TV. <laughs> I don't watch a whole lot of TV, but I do enjoy that show. That and war documentaries. Dude, this guy is such a fucking sucker of energy. He's a fucking energy vampire. Does she sell drugs or something? Um, I don't think she sells drugs yet, but she just has that type of personality. All right, Daisy, I found us a couple of bugs. They're going to make great meals, lots of protein, and to keep us from starving out there in the harsh, icy wasteland. But there's a whole table of food right there. Daisy, it's a game. We're playing pretend. It's what kids do. Live a little. Amanda gives Daisy a handful of gummy boards from the snack table. They eat them with mock disgust. Let's go find kindling for a fire. Okay. But not an actual fire because we're playing pretend. Now you're getting it. Daisy and Amanda run off. What a cute couple of kids. I mean, I've never seen her get along with anyone so quickly. I guess Amanda just has a way with kids. That's kind of amazing. Daisy doesn't really get along with kids her age. Hmm. It's nice that he's not trying to one-up me this time. Maybe we can have a regular friendship after all. Really? She just kind of keeps to herself. Her teacher says that she spends every recess in the library. I think the other kids are intimidated by her intelligence. There it is. I wouldn't worry about it too much. Amanda was shy at Daisy's age, too. She used to have a habit of crawling under tables and crying every time we took her to a restaurant. She bit people too. Oof. Kids, right? Gotta love them. You're required to by law. <laughs> oh my god. Aaron needs to crop, crop dust Robert for his own safety. Bro, Robert is way too much. I hear that. Well, since they're getting along so well, maybe we should try to put together a little play date for them. They do seem to get along really well, but the thought of continually, continuously hearing all about Brian's accomplishments is rough. Yeah, that'd be nice. Well, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Go meet some of the other fellas. Oh, thank God. Without further ado, let's work some magic. Joseph closes his eyes, takes a deep breath, and gets to work. With the greatest of ease, he sets the patties on the grill, flourishing as he flips his spatula in the air. It's easily, it's easily some of the best grill work I've ever seen. You guys think this is my first time on, in front of a grill? He's working faster now, effortlessly tossing cheese into the patties and perfectly grilling onions on the side. One after another, the dads take notice and crawling around Joseph to admire his masterful technique. You probably didn't know this, Aaron, but Joseph no Joseph's known around here for his grillmanship. He's an un ungr it's uh, he's ungrillable. I cannot believe I said that. Yuck. Tried to get on his level, but I can't get ketchup. But I can't catch. <laughs> I, fucking, I fucking hate this. I hate puns like this. Oh my gosh, you guys. Thanks for fucking beating the IRL coloring stream goal challenge thing. That's so amazing. All right, I'll have to do that soon. I'll have to do it soon. Maybe not this week, maybe next week. Let us keep... Oh, All these dad jokes are making me want to puke. Let us keep studying. He has a rare quality about him. Oh, my God. 
Mustard, we keep talking about this. Can't we just appreciate the artist? I've never seen him make a mistake. Okay, we need to stop. This is getting too cheesy. Oh my God. Please stop. All the children at the party boo the glorious display of puns in unison. Oh my God. I'm not even going to read that out loud. All right, guys, the food is ready. Please form an orderly barbecue. I fucking hate this. Amanda groans. <laughs> we all grab our food and hit and hang out, enjoying perfectly cooked cheeseburgers. Man, it's wild how all of us dads live in the same cul-de-sac. Kind of nice, isn't it? It feels like there's real community here. Totally helps when you're just a single dad trying to raise a kid. We're happy to have you here, man. I think you're going to like this neighborhood a lot. Plus, Amanda seems to be getting along with all the kids. If she decides to get into babysitting games, she'll really make a killing. Hey, why don't you add all of us on dad book? Dad book? Dad book? Are you fucking serious? Dad book? Yeah, it's a great social network for dads to keep in touch with another with each other. We're all on it, so if you ever need to reach out to anyone, that's the simplest way to do it. Sorry, I'm just an old-fashioned dad. Social media goes over my head sometimes. Don't worry, Pops. I'll help you figure it out. The rest of the barbecue goes smoothly, and we all trade stories, drink beer as our kids play on the lawn. Amanda breaks up a fight between Carmen Sita and those weird twins. I think they wanted her soul. <laughs> what the fuck? They wanted their soul. Amanda and I walk back to our place as the sun sets over the neighborhood. Pretty fun party, don't you think? Felt like I was at a networking event. <laughs> I'm going to get LinkedIn notifications out of this. I just know it. You don't think it's nice that people want to connect with you? Not when their affection jams, jams up my inbox, metaphorically speaking. Well, hey, at least you met some other cool dads. You should hit them up on Dadbook. Maybe I will if I ever figure out how social media works. I have a good feeling about this place. Me too, Dad. Amanda and I arrive home with the remnants of our veggie plate. Mm, seems like no one was really into the cauliflower. Any big plans for this evening? Actually, yeah, I'm going to go out with some friends. Oh, is that okay? Of course, just keep me posted and be home before midnight. You got it. And be careful. I will. Make good choices. Of course, and call me if you need anything. Dad, you're not going to do the thing where you wait silently for me to come home in the living room with all the lights off, are you? What? No. I've never done that, and I will never do that. Okay, do you have plans tonight? I, uh, my plans were kind of to eat ice cream and watch TV with Amanda, but I'll find something to do. I'm going to work on some stuff. You know, dad stuff. Just relaxing tonight. Have fun, okay? Great. See you later. I watch Amanda drive off into the night. I really do hope she has fun. I plop down in front of the TV and turn on turn on some wine and dine mastermind with celebrity Gavin Chapman. Looks like Gavin's making a roast rack of lamb with rosemary mashed potatoes. Oh, I love rosemary mashed potatoes. Ugh. I'd love to be able to cook that. Although, I think if I was actually good at cooking, I'd use my powers for evil. Like just making baked Alaskas all day instead of any food or real nutritious substance. <laughs> I could get jammed up with some affection. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Man, Gavin Chapman just caught that thing on fire, but he meant to do it. What a professional. I lose track of time as I blaze through several episodes of Wine and Dine Mastermind and also one episode of some cooking show called Me Tell. Ooh, that sounds terrible. I'm not even sure what that one was about. It was just a lot of yelling. Glance on my watch. Man, it's almost midnight. I should check in with Amanda. I send a text. Hey, kiddo, you good? I wander into the kitchen as I wait for a reply. Amanda's phone is almost always in her hand, so I'm sure she'll respond soon. Unless she's driving home now, which in case I hope she doesn't respond soon because I definitely taught her to be better than to text and drive. I reach into the freezer and grab an ice cream sandwich. It's a little late for this, but I think I earned it after a long day of socializing. I check my watch again, and then my phone. 
Nothing yet. Mm. Okay, see, now I'm worried. Do I call her? Do I call the cops? No, 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 no. It's too soon for that. I'll just send her a gentle reminder text. What's up? Half an hour passes. Now I'm really worried. The episodes of Gavin Chapman Meet Hell are not, are not only, not, are not only not as, what? <laughs> what is this word? Assugating, assugate, ass, or not ass. I don't know. I have no idea what this word is. My anxiety, but possibly exacerbating it with all the yelling. So I keep pacing around the house, waiting for her to come back. Why didn't I find out where she was going? Who she was even with? Why didn't I know any of her friends' phone numbers? Why don't I know any of her friends' full names? Who was Emma P? I decided to send her another text. Amanda, please text me and let me know you're okay. I can't help but think of all the awful things that could be happening to her. Oh, thank God it's her. Amanda opens the door and shuffles in. Finally finally she's back home i'm so glad she's home sup sweetie thank god you're safe Ugh. yep now that i know that she's okay i'm really mad why didn't you answer my texts amanda amanda pulls her phone out of her pocket oh whoops i guess i didn't see these she starts to walk to her room amanda and oh we're pulling the middle name now Amanda, you come home an hour and a half after your curfew and you didn't even respond to any of my texts. You really freaked me out. I was about to call the cops. Dad, you're seriously overreacting. You're not going to be like this when I go off to school, are you? You're my only daughter. Well, I can't give you a play-by-play -play of everything. I do all the time. I'm 18. You shouldn't have to be giving me a curfew in the first place. Bro, this fucking child. I just want to punch her in the face. I sit on the couch and put my head in my hands. I feel very tired all of a sudden. It really scared me. Just please don't do that again. All right. I'm going to go to bed now. I want, I do want, I want a chocolate chip cookie too. I'm good. Amanda closes the door to her room and I head to mine. Jeez. Falling asleep. One thing she said it keeps echoing in my mind. You're not going to be like this when you go out, when I go off to school, are you? Oof. I definitely did not sleep well last night. I brew some strong coffee and make some scrambled eggs for Amanda as a peace offering. She eventually wanders into the kitchen. Hey, I thought about what you said last night. I should have texted you. I said I was going to do it and I didn't. I honestly just didn't even think about it. I'm really sorry, Pops. I won't do it again. Well... I also thought about it, and I'll try to give you more space from here on out. I gotta trust that you can take care of yourself. Team Angelo. Team Angelo. Amanda gives me a hug. Want some eggs? You know it. Sprinkle some cheese on them? Already did. Bless you. Amanda scarfed on the eggs in time it takes me to wash the pan. <laughs> All right, I'm off to school. Smell you later. Wait, one more thing before you go. What? What's dad book? It's a social media platform. What? Or wait. What? What's a social media platform? Oh my God. It's like I'm talking to Astroff. Jeez. Dad, I have to go to school. Come on, Amanda. I'm an old man. I can't put together a dad book profile on my own. All right. I'll help you sound interesting on the internet. Amanda spends the next couple of minutes setting up my profile on dad book, which as it turns out is a place where dads can get together and talk about fatherhood. All right, pops, we got to fill out your profile. Let's get some likes and dislikes. Ooh likes and dislikes Ooh. okay 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 might be some time to make a mug cookie what the f is a mug cookie On a Friday night, you are most likely to. Hmm. Netflix and grill, baby. Let's go. Okay, but how do you make it, though? I want to know. 
If you had one thing to take with you to the desert island, what would it be? Ooh. I don't need anything. My survival skills have trained me for this day. <laughs> what are your turn-ons? Ooh. A well-manicured lawn? Actually, lawns are really nice. I do like a good lawn. Comfortable with crying? Tennis shoes with long white socks? <laughs> Bro, can you imagine? Can you imagine, like, on, like, a fucking Tinder profile or fucking whatever, and you literally put this as, like, a turn-on? Yeah, baby, I love people with tennis shoes and long white socks. Mm, like, no, that isn't even... <laughs> Um, <laughs> if you don't have long white socks and tennis shoes, we're over. I mean, some people like socks. I mean, um, weirdos. <laughs> Go on your first date with someone and, and be like, lift up your pants. They'd be like, what the fuck? And I'd be like, yeah, lift up your pant leg. And if you see someone with white socks and tennis shoes, you'd be like, oh, shit, child. I'm so glad I want to date with you. Bro, what the fuck? Thigh highs exist for a reason. Okay, but these aren't thigh highs, though. These are just socks. These are like tube socks. Let's go with street smarts. I'm not like, I do like street smarts. What did you want to be when you grow up? Mm, a pro skater who's also an astronaut? You're a tube sock. <laughs> the president of space. Salty boat captain. That sounds dumb. What do you want to be when you grow up? A salty boat captain. Is that someone that's like salty? Like their personality is salty? But they also want to be a boat captain? <laughs> or they're, they're in the ocean. Like they're on a boat in the ocean. So technically they're an ocean boat captain. <gasps> I'm picking that one. What's your favorite movie genre? Sean Connery's entire, I don't even know who the, who's Sean Connery? I forgot. You have a small ween. You have a small ween. Listen, if they're, I just, I, just, I don't know, man. I'm just kind of spouting shit. I do not, I don't really care for romantic comics. I mean, I think they're funny and I like them every now and then, but I don't like go out of my way and like, I want to watch romantic comedy. No. What the fuck is laser disc? Sean Con I don't I don't even know who Sean Connery is. <sighs> Old comedies that haven't aged well. Okay, I get, let's fuck it. Let's just go to romantic comedies. What's your ideal date? Doing a thousand piece puzzle together. You can get fuck <gasps> arson. Because they have arson. Oh my gosh, Woody would totally approve of this. I need to I need to take a fucking screenshot. How do I do this? Witty would totally appreciate this. Oh my God, Witty would appreciate this.
<laughs> okay, definitely not doing a puzzle. Trying to geocache but getting hopelessly lost. I really want to press arson. My impulses are really high right now. Being emotionally vulnerable. Bitch! Arson. Allegedly. Not legit. Allegedly. What do you never leave home without? My dignity. A cool knife. Accurate. I frequently forget my, key, my phone, keys, and wallet at home sometimes. My crippling low self-esteem. <laughs> That's so sad. Um, a cool knife. I spend a lot of time thinking about potential ends of the world. I mean, fair. If I'll ever be able to love myself as much as I love my grill. Oh, my God. Why don't you and your grill go fuck in the back room? Jeez. When I can get the next cup of coffee. Accurate. Lawnmower modifications. Bro, this is, this, this is the worst dad book ever. Profile complete. See? Wasn't so bad. Yeah, that was actually kind of fun. I could totally spend all day on here just looking at people's profiles. You said Mesh is one of them. Or more than one of them. All of these dads seem pretty interesting. Okay, I promise I'll make some friends. Amanda gives me a hug. Go get him, Dan. Bro, what kind of... You've got dads! <laughs> Dad Manda. Hi, Aaron. It's me, your dear old friend from back in the day, Dad Manda. I'm delighted to see you sign up for Dad Book. They recently added this exciting new messenger service, so you may find yourself receiving messages from other dads like myself. Take care to not miss them. Amanda, is that you? What are you doing on Dad Book? Why, Aaron? I never. We've known each other since business school. How could you possibly confuse me with your amazing and talented and easy to buy things for daughter? Though, I am of course flattered you should buy Amanda more things. <laughs> She's funny. Amanda, you know I don't didn't go to business school. I barely even managed to get my degree. Wait. No. Wow. I didn't say that. You've never heard that. This is gold. I swear I was a great student. I graduated at the top of my class because I worked very hard and ate all my vegetables. Totally holding on to this for later. Wait, do you remember what I majored in? I declined to comment. Cool. Ooh. Ooh. This message, Craig. Okay, Craig's profile. On a Friday night, you are most likely, you are more likely to get one last good cardio session in. I refuse to comment. If you had one thing to take with you to a desert island, what would it be? A box of energy bars? Oh, God, I'm a fucking beadhead. What are your turn-ons? A sub six-minute What? What is this? What does this mean? A sub six-minute mile? Oh, like a subpar six-minute? Okay, that makes sense. What did you want to be when you grow up? A beer pong world champion? Bro, what a fucking beadhead. What's your favorite movie genre? Buddy cop movies forever. What's your ideal date? Scaling a huge dangerous mountain for fun. That is kind of fun, actually. I have scaled a huge wall before. That was really terrifying. But you know what? Here we are. What do you never leave home without? And My brain thought of something really, really X-rated. And we're not going to say it because we're going to reread the sentence properly and not in an X-rated manner. Okay, what do you never leave home without? An extra tube of energy gel. What is energy gel? That sounds gross. Oh, I'm grossed out. What is energy gel? I'm so confused. I spend a lot of time thinking about my mile time used to be so good. What happened? Have I peaked? Bro, Craig, what a fucking need it. Hugo? Bro, I think I'm going to go after Hugo. Hugo's smart. 
on a Friday night, you are most likely to brew some strong tea and paint my miniature. Bro, he's cute. He's fucking cute. If you had one thing to take with you to a desert island, what would it be? A Remembrance of Things Past by Marcel Proust. What are your turn-ons, muscles? Accurate. What did you want to be when you grew up? A movie star? Okay, okay. Practical. What is your favorite movie genre? Documentaries on art history. God, you might be too boring. What's your ideal date? Each of us read a different book on opposite sides of the couch in comfortable silence. Dude, this guy's weird. What, did you, what would you never leave home without? My glasses. Actually, I forget them at home a lot. Fair. If, like, I swear you guys, if I didn't have contacts, like, if they were not, like, literally like, glued, like, suction cup to my eyes, I would, I would forget my glasses every fucking day. Can confirm. I spent a lot of time thinking about, I worry that people are against e-readers are more... I worry that people who are against e-readers are more in love with the idea of books than actually reading them. Weird. What about Robert? When the internet gains sen sentience and decides to destroy all of us, it'll be it'll use this information against us, right? This guy's weird. This guy's weird. On a Friday night, you're most likely to make a deal in an alleyway. <gasps> Have it go badly. Who's the cop? Was it Guy Como? I trusted Guy Como. What the fuck? What's your biggest, what are your turn ons? Don't talk to me. What's your ideal first date grave robbing? <gasps> Bro, this guy's a fucking weirdo. I spent a lot of time thinking about Never really look into rabi into rabid animal eyes. Okay, bro. I, bro. Mm, Joseph. <laughs> Living in my hometown with my beautiful wife and our four amazing kids. If I'm not in church, you can catch me. Br boring. Damien. How do you do? Ugh. Gross. I have finally decided to join this information superhighway. I'm not entirely sure how this works, but I will try my best to understand. I love long strolls through graveyards and spending time with my son. Bro, him and Robert should be together. If you would like to chat about the latest in Victorian fashion, the inevitability of our own demise, or black cats, please send me a letter. I love black cats. <gasps> he listens to true po crime podcasts while he... Oh, okay, that's weird. Pro pronouncing bosom correctly bosom that's awkward that's fucking weird this guy is so weird oh my god okay what about matt selling bean juice i hate the fact that he says it, that, it, that he calls it bean juice We go to the animal shelter and seriously consider adopting a cat. That's so cute. Oh my God. I'm going to message Craig. Hey, babe. <laughs> I wonder what Craig's up to today. I navigate to Craig's dad book page and try type out a message. Hey, bro, or should I say neighbor? Let's catch up like old times. I, a couple moments pass before I hear a ding on the computer. It's a message from Craig. That was quick. Bro, my man, let's definitely hang out soon. Might be a little different from our old weekend long benders, but it'll still be fun. I think for the moment, this could be a fun opportunity to see my old buddy in his new element. We exchange a couple more messages and he logs off to prep for the game. I should see if Amanda wants to join me. I walk over to Amanda's room and knock on the door. Yo, Amanda Panda. I open the door and find Amanda sitting cross-legged on the floor, surrounded by magazines and newspaper clippings. She seems to be making some sort of an art piece, but her eyes are a little puffy, almost as if she'd been crying. Hey, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. 
I just got a little sad because I realized that dogs are too are often too killed off in movies to elicit emotional reactions from the audience instead of being given the respect that they deserve. It's not right. Dogs, are you sure that's all you're upset about? If there's, you know, anything going on, I just want you to know that I'm here for you and always will be here for you. Whenever you hear shoulder to cry on or a strong dad to go kick someone's butt, I'm only a phone call away. Thanks, Popsicle. I appreciate that. But I'm fine, really. I'm unconvinced, but I'll stop badgering her about it. I'm sure she'll tell me when she's ready. What you working on? Just a collage for class. We're supposed to make a piece that represents our goals for the future. I take a closer look at her collage. That's a lot of dogs. It's mostly dogs, yeah. Did you need something? Craig invited us to a softball game. Want to go? Remember that one time you signed me up for softball and brought me and bought me all the gear and then you took me to the first game and then someone hit a ball towards me and I just ran off the field crying? And then you hid in the dugout and would scream if I tried to pick you up? Yes. I was afraid of baseballs. I thought you, I thought you were a gigantic sentient softball. So does that mean you don't want to go? Amanda gets up and looks me dead in the eyes, determined. I'm finally ready to face my fears head on. Let's do this. Amanda and I make a sh the short drive out to the local softball field. For a kid's softball game, it's pretty packed. We clam clamber, clam yeah, clamber up to the bleachers and take our seats on the top row. I don't see Craig anywhere. So when do the kids start crying and running off the field? You know, that your relationship with the softball is different from everyone else's relationship with softball, right? Okay, but if I don't see some kids cry, I'm going to be pretty disappointed. For nostalgia purposes, of course. Not because I take joy out of children fighting for my amusement. Definitely not that. <laughs> Game starts and the kids run onto the field. I see Craig by the dugout with the clipboard. He has river strapped to his chest as per usual. There's a guy in a pancake costume doing jumping jacks across the field. I guess that's the mascot. Reading the kids' brightly colored jerseys, I see that it's a Maple Bay flapjacks against the Pinewood Ocelots. Yo, flapjacks? Pick up the bat, Miranda. Yeah, Amanda, square up. How much do you know about softball? Enough to know that the balls are relatively hard, despite their name. But yelling is fun. Give it a shot. It's cathartic. <laughs> what would you yell in this situation? <laughs> What are you willing to sacrifice to win? Leave it on the field, Miranda. If you want this, you're going to have to bleed for it. Who? I assume Amanda's father giving me dirty looks. I shoot it back at him. That attitude isn't going to bring Miranda to D1. Dad, please don't fight any other dads while we're out here. We watch a couple of innings in softball. There aren't. They aren't ready for major leagues yet, but Craig's trained his team pretty well. It seems like he's really good with kids. Keg Stan Craig is good with kids. Wow. That's kind of cute. He's good with kids. Oh, no. That's my maternal instinct saying. Ugh. Oh, my God. Stop me, please. Ew. Rushing the Ocelot's team have yet. I see one outfield. It's full of grass. Oh my god, this is scary. A batter on the other team knocks a foul ball into the stands. I follow the trajectory and Oh no, it's coming right for me. Oh no, 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 oh no. I close my eyes and brace for impact. 
open my eyes and I look over to Amanda holding the softball, staring at it. Amazing. I, I caught the ball. You saved me. I caught the ball, Dad. I caught the ball. I did it. Again. I faced my fears. I defeated the softball. I could do it. I should be big. I never mind that I did. I'm proud. Game ends where I get where the sit patient. Great job, everyone. Walked over to the dugout to congratulate Craig. He's talking to some parents. Craig, great work, man. Hard all and it's great to see it paying off. So proud of all my girls. Which have you met Briar and Hannah? Hello. Hey, playing out there. Yeah, you guys really thank you. You guys are twins, huh? So which of one of you is Hazel? Yeah. <laughs> Good looking out. You guys ever pretend to be each other? I don't have a twin, but I think if I did, I'd be Yeah, I take all of her math tests. And I usually throw rocks at stuff and that I'll tell them What? Talk about things later. Aaron, bro, I just got a couple more things to clean up and we can hang out. Sounds good. Just then, one of my moms, just then, one of the moms jumped into the conversation. Not so fast. We have to celebrate our win, Craig. I'm going to get the whole team to get. Oh, I don't know if I can. Nonsense. Girls, what sort of celebration could we have without our fearless leader? <sighs> to butt in. I hate that. Holes. That's fucking cool. I could never forget. How did we survive college? Our bodies were young back then, more elastic, more able to handle the toxic waste we put in ourselves. The good old days. The kids run around playing arcade games and eating greasy food. Amanda and I jump on a couple of slices of mediocre pizza. Hey, give me a pizza that. Oh my god. Oh my god, no, not more dad jokes. Yuck, I suck at these. No, absolutely not. I'm just kidding. I'm strictly eating salad here. Thanks for addressing the issue, Amanda. Oh my god. Where's Brie when you need her? A diff a different mom walks up to us talking to Craig as as if we weren't even there. Craig, thank you so much for looking after our kids. My daughter tells me every day about how great you are. Oh, I'm happy to look after them. Definitely helps that I have my own kids. It's been so hard since Daniel left. I'm glad to know that my children have a strong male figure in their lives. Bitch, back up, okay? Back up. If anybody's getting Craig, it's me, motherfucker. Back up. Martha. Martha, back up. Back up. Amanda and I look at each other again. Craig gets, all, gets it all from angles. Craig smiles sheepishly. Thank you so much, dude. Craig holds out his fist for a fist bump from the mom in what I think is a maneuver to lighten the conversation. He looks super uncomfortable. I should throw him a bone here. <sighs> Tag team with Amanda. Yeah, yeah. I give Amanda another knowing look and she hits me back with a nod. She understands. Amanda puts her... What? her hand to her stomach and looks at me with puppy dog eyes dad i don't feel so good i ate too much pizza oh no sweetie you're not gonna projectile vomit everywhere are you yeah i think i'm gonna projectile vomit everywhere right now 
the words projectile vomit and right here usually seems to get everyone to clear out but martha's not budging <gasps> back it up martha you're in the splash zone i drink a lot of orange juice this morning and it's feeling pretty acidic i'll be fine fucking bitch amanda shoots me with a worried look this con is going sideways should have known that of I should know that a mom of all people would know the fake puke scam. Oh, well, I guess it went away and I'm fine now. Nothing's wrong. She turns back. <laughs> she turns her back on me to talk to Craig. So I'm taking Hazel and Briar tonight for the sleepover. Yep, they're pretty excited about it. You'll keep them out of trouble, right? Well, of course, I can always use help after watching everyone tonight if you're not doing anything. Wow, this lady's really going for the gold. Ugh. It'll actually be nice to have a night to myself and River, but thanks for the invite. Martha, you might want to grab your child. She's stuffing Pete's into the coin slot. <laughs> That's such a good thing to do. That's something that I would do. <laughs> Martha angrily turns her attention towards her daughter. Tiffany, not another arcade machine. I swear if I have to buy it. Damn, this bitch is fucking crazy. Bitch is crazy. This bitch is a Karen. We got a stage five clinger, y'all. Martha storms off towards her kid. She seems nice. Yeah, the team is one big weird family. Takes all sorts, right? Tiffany, do not eat the tokens. Tiffany's a stellar hitter. Phew. Finally, I think I have time to talk to Craig now. Man, you're a busy guy, huh? Only on days like today, I hope. Dad. Hey, girls. Dad, can you help us beat our record on DDR? We told Ariana's dad that you could destroy him on the dance mat. Please help. Girls, you know I don't have my jukes anymore. But dad. Craig looks at me like a hurt puppy. Sorry, dudes. Duty calls. I promise we'll catch up in a bit. It's all good, buddy. Craig runs off with his daughters and I'm left alone with mine. Man, I was really hoping to hang out with Craig more today, but it seems like he's getting dragged in every direction. It definitely wasn't like this in college. I feel like we might be a third wheel here. There's worse places than an arcade to be left to your own devices. You're right. Want to drop some coins on pinball? You know it. And I pull up on a machine that's feeling pretty hot and get to work. I'm a little rusty, but the pinball wizard within me will never die. I pull out a decent score and then challenge Amanda to top me. And immediately she gets multiball. Looks like she takes after her father. Pretty good. Don't patronize me. Hey, I'm just trying to pay a comp. Amanda shushes me. She's in her zone. She fights valiantly, racking up points by the millions. She's this close to beating my score, but I feel honored just to be able to watch. You're friends with Craig, right? Janet from earlier walks up and leans on the pinball machine. Uh, yeah, we went to college together. Please don't lean on my thing. Uh, that's so interesting. So do you know if he's, like, available? <gasps> Oh, I honestly don't know if I could say. Seriously, you're going to make it tilt. Because it's just, it seems like so much work to watch after his kids. Don't you think it'd be great if he, lady, I swear to God, all of a sudden a buzzer sound and the game is over. Janet made the pinball machine to, bro, I would have punched this bitch in the tit. Like, I swear. You stoned harpy. What? I said I have to go over there now and put pizza in my mouth so I don't say anything that'll hurt your feelings. Amanda? Bro! What's going on? <laughs> when do you got my text? <laughs> so I was setting up my dad profile. And that was one of the questions that it asked me. <laughs> Turned out more cakey than cookie. Is that bad though? I mean, I guess if you want more, I guess if you want cake instead of cookie, yeah. Now is our chance. If you don't get out of here now, we're stuck for the rest of the night. I wrangle Amanda and say some quick goodbyes with Craig. We're out of the pizza place. Finally. Amanda promises that, she, that she'll keep the couch warm for me and heads home. <sighs> Hope you don't mind me bringing you back here, bro. I don't know, dude. It's, finally, it's good to finally get you all to myself for a sec. River burps. Well, almost to myself. Hold up. 
Craig walks over to the trunk of his car and pulls out two gloves and a softball. Up for some catch? This might be less catch and more you throwing the ball and me running after it, but sure. We stand in the middle of the empty baseball diamond and start tossing the ball back and forth. I have a cooler in my car that we could grab, but there's only juice boxes in there. Man, fatherhood is strange. <laughs> You're telling me. I can't believe I'm looking back on my keg stand Craig days and still reminiscing about it. Those are some good times. I don't know anyone else who could pull off the rare horizontal keg stand. Unless they're pre-made dough. Yeah, same. If they're from scratch, they turn out like muffin tops. <laughs> Cute. Why don't you just make muffin cookies? Like, or why don't you just make muffins, Carm? Because if you make muffins, or like if you make them like muffins, like, you should just make them. You should just make muffins. Why is this game hilarious? It's not into, oh. Okay, so then why don't you just make cookies? I think I overmix my dough. You can overmix dough. I didn't know that. It was a feat of discipline, bro. Trust me. I haven't probably hung out with Craig in so long. I didn't even. I don't even know where to begin. Can't believe you're a father of three. Neither can I. You know me. I'm an indecisive person. You switched your major four times. Yeah, I had no idea what I do want to do my life, but raising kids. When Briar and Hazel were born, it all finally made sense. It was like all the time I had spent trying to figure out things out. Le what? I had spent trying to figure out things out led to them. Too much air makes them fluffy. Okay. But if. So if you don't. So if you barely mix them. They'll be cookies. What? How does that make sense? But if you mix it and then you like condense it, would that still make them cookies? I couldn't be happier about it. I don't think I've ever cared about anything as much as I care about them. I had the exact same feeling when Amanda was born. It was the best thing to ever happen to me. It could, it could be the only thing that ever happened to me and I would still be proud of the life I lived. Begging is weird. It's it's like the science that I never understood. Like, it's so weird. And I suck at measuring, too. So, like, it's like, put a teaspoon of this. Bro, I don't know what the fuck a teaspoon looks like without put it, pulling out a teaspoon. Like, <laughs> like, like, once a year. <laughs> Ask about the business. So you run a business now. Yeah, we sell fitness gear, imports and exports mostly, but we're coming up with our own line of athleisure wear soon. I nod. I mostly use my sweatpants for watching TV and not, you know, sweating. Sounds like he'd make a killing. You ever need athletic gear? I've got your back. You could sponsor me. I'll whip your athleisure brand while I mow my lawn. That's the glamour lifestyle we're catering to. Yes. So is softball coach the life you wanted or was the life that was thrust upon you ha i'll admit i was hesitant at first briar and hazel had so much energy that we had to get them into sports but no one was there to run the team the more i did it the more i saw how much it meant to the girls i'm worried they'd be a riot if i quit i'd also be afraid of a bunch of tiny children with metal bats <laughs> that's funny They're, they quit quick and they work as a team i've trained them too well they easily take you down like a pack of velociraptors on a T-Rex. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my God. It's nice out here. Quiet. Must be good to get away from the softball moms for a bit, huh? Christ, Janet. Yeah, that was a lot. They always like that? Actually, this wasn't nearly as bad. Yikes. I'm just so not interested. Well, what are you interested in? Peace and quiet. That's hot. Hot silence. My old. 
My ultimate sexual fantasy is sleeping in on a Saturday. <gasps> oh, Lord. Dude, then I fulfill Craig's sexual fantasy every Saturday. Because I love sleeping in. Oof. I achieved it. It happens. But more seriously, I can't get back into dating right now. I couldn't even if I wanted to. There's no time. But I feel so uncomfortable trying to, to introduce a stranger to my girls' lives. These are they've already been through so much. I can't put them through that. But yeah, I hear you. So the moms can hit on me all day they want, but the girls are my top priority. Those kids love you, and to add to that, the whole team loves you. I think you got this dad thing down right. Thanks. That means a lot coming from you. While I'm distracted, I miss the softball and hits me right in the head. Wow, that hurts. Amanda was right all along. Sorry, dude. Craig runs over to me. Are you okay? Oh, my God. I need mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Oh. Wait, let me do the dad thing for a second. Craig's, Craig spends a moment examining me in my head. It's worse than I thought. Don't tell me you have to kiss it to make it better. Do it. Kiss it. You would be so lucky. I feel like I've earned it at this point, waiting all day to hang out with you. Well? Yeah, I did. Ooh, that was smooth too. That was smooth. It's cool. It's cool. We're good. We're cool. We're cool. We're cool. It's cool, guys. It's cool. Craig leans in and kisses my forehead. Walk it off, champ. Are the lights on this softball field really hot, or is that just me? Ooh, girl, shit. <laughs> I get up and dust myself off. River yawns. Hey, little buddy, you must be getting tired, huh? I hate to say it, but I probably should head out. Sorry, things are so. You get older and life kind of just gets out of gets in the way. Yeah. We start walking back to the parking lot. Hey, remember that house party we went to that got broken up by a helicopter? How can I forget? You and me hopped over the concrete wall to get away. Can I have forehead forehead smoochies? Mwah. There you go, Tommy. The other side of the fence was a parking lot where a bunch of cops were parked. <laughs> Oh man, yeah. Could you imagine the look on our faces? We just walked past we just walked straight past them like we were out for a stroll. And not knowing that we were at the party, they started joking with us about how big of a bust it was. We had to talk with them for 30 minutes. You told them you were interested in joining the academy. And then they started giving me pointers for the exam, longest 30 minutes of my life. Man, college. Good old days, right? We get back to our cars. Craig pulls me into a hug, or at least as much as we can manage with a baby between us. Never enough time, huh? Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> Let me make it up to you. Let's hang out soon, yeah? <laughs> yeah? Okay. <laughs> if you say so. Bro, I actually think it's really cute that he's, like, into his kids. Like, I love, I think it's really cute. Like, on, like, okay, on, like, the for real, for real note, I do think it's really cute. I think, I think it is really cute. It's very commendable. I yawn as I walk through the door, spotting Amanda hunched over her collage, glue stick in hand, burning the midnight art oil. Figured I might do something productive between episodes of Shark Hunter, Lip Sync Battles. What the fuck shows are these? I want to know. Because I want to watch them. Do the shark... Okay, wait. Blech. Do the sharks lip sync or do the shark hunters lip sync? Yes. What? I look over her shoulder at the collage. Amanda, this is some good art. Look at this good art you made. Thanks, I'm just about done. 
like before it's still a lot of dogs in one corner is a giant giant pile of cash in the other it's man does that mean yep the whole thing is about my goals for the future and those are basically just to sit on a giant pile of money with my 20 dogs and also have a strong and mutually supportive relationship with my father into adulthood <gasps> that's so cute that's so cute oh my heart <sighs> Now you've done it. Get ready to watch your dad cry. Here it comes. It's happening. Oh, dad, you did this with your good art. She pats me on the back. Hey, how was your hang with Craig? Oh, you know, it was, it was fine. Mm, it was fine. I wipe a tear from my eye. It was good. That Craig guy is sure is busy. Yeah, dude, the softball life isn't for quitters. Also, I'm very proud of you for facing your fears today. How does it feel? I'm on top of the world, Pops. I should start facing my fears more often. Oh, yeah? How about tomorrow we hit some empty parking lots and practice? Dare I say, parallel parking? Okay, baby steps, Dad. Calm down. Or work my way up to it. All right, I'm going to hit the hay. Take care of the late night television for me, all right? I'll let them know you said hey. Oh my God, Tome, you missed it. You missed it. <laughs> we got a forehead kiss. We got a we got a forehead kiss from Craig. Ooh. Yeah, we did. Okay, I'm saving it just in case. While I'm doing my afternoon world jumper, <laughs> my brain is moving too fast. While I am doing my afternoon world word <clears throat> word jumbles, I hear the mail truck pull through the cul-de-sac. I wonder if we got any coupons today. The nice mail person slides a couple of letters in a large yellow envelope through the slot. It takes a couple of tries to get them in. Hey, my coupons. I take a closer look at the yellow, large yellow envelope. Mm. I lightly knock on Amanda's door. She probably has headphones on. Amanda? She yells through the door. What? I have something for you. I'm kind of busy right now. Can you come back later? Okay, I just thought you want this big old envelope we got from HIA. Immediately, Amanda pushes the door open. Horn Institute from the Arts? I mean, if you're busy, I can come back. Father, please. I hand her the envelope, which she tears open with her teeth. Why is that such a move? That's probably bad for your teeth. She doesn't seem to hear me and spits out a piece of the envelope. She pulls out a letter and unfolds it. And? The suspense is killing me. This is her dream school. Amanda's face is unreadable. I can't believe this. Aw. I'm like invested in this kid's art school dream. <laughs> I'm like really invested. It's okay if you didn't. I got it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Listen, I know she's not my kid, but like I'm invested. Okay. Oh, I got in. Amanda tosses the letter aside and gives me a big hug. Congrats, sweetie. That's amazing. I'm proud of you. She pulls away and looks at the letter again. Oh my God. I really cannot believe I got in. Well, of course you got in. You're a great student. You nailed that interview and your photography is incredible. Wait, dad. I know this one's really expensive and it's far away. I think for a moment, HIA was one of the most, was one of the more expensive schools that Amanda applied to, but I know she had her heart set in it for the longest time. It'll be tough, but we're going to make it work. Oh no, Marvel, not the kitty cat. Oh, fuck. Why would you do this to me? Also, hi, Marvel. Fine. Five minutos. Five toes. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Five minutos. Starting right now, Nya. Really, Nya? 
Does it really say 10 minutes? Okay. Can I do five minutes now and then five minutes in like 20 minutes? Which is technically 10 minutes. Or do you want 10 minutes all right now? Mm, okay. I'm listening. Well, technically I'm not listening because I'm reading. So technically I'm reading. First one's good. Okay. So everyone, we have to nya for five minutes and then we'll nya in the next 20 minutes. Really nya? Of course nya. Amanda hugs me again. Thanks, dad nya. Okay, sweetie. We're celebrating tonight. Dinner, your choice. Wherever you want nya. Wherever nya? Amanda and I walk along the bayside, tearing into our foil-wrapped burritos from the nearby food truck. Yeah. You could have chosen anywhere in Maple Bay. Coast was not a determining factor. Yeah. Cost was not a determining factor. Sorry. Please, Dad. You know I'm a simple gal. Yeah. Just give me a Rito with a view, bro. Me too. Yeah. Me fucking too. Yeah. Me too. I fucking love burritos. I can't say I'm mad. Amanda and I sit on a patch of grass and watch ships sail lazily through the bay. Yeah. And the dorms are right near the near a bunch of cafes. The Nya works with the story. Nya does it really? Nya. Ooh. Okay, good. I don't know how I'm making it work, but I'm making. And the dorms are right near a bunch of cafes, and there are all these galleries nearby. There's a discount if you bring your student ID, and <gasps> I could have said Nya. Okay, wait. You bring your student ID, Nya. Amanda, slow down. You're going to choke on your burrito, Nya. I know. I'm just excited. Did I mention that students get their own studio space once they're seniors, Nya? And we get all the professional photo editing software for Nya? Not the for Nya. Ooh. It's so nice to see Amanda so enthusiastic about HIA, but I wish she wouldn't do it in between bites of her burrito. I thought I taught her to chew with her mouth closed, Nya. I wonder who my roommate's gonna be, Nya. You take a survey online and they match you with someone who, someone with a similar major and interest, Nya. I bet we're gonna be best friends. Craig and I were. A good roommate can be a lifelong nya. Aw, that's kind of cute. But don't get me started on bad roommates. Oh, nya. I'm just kidding. We didn't, have, we didn't have a bad roommate. Our only other roommate was a puppy that Craig brought home one night. We spent a semester fabricating a story about our new foreign exchange student who had a really bad cough that sounded exactly like a dog's bark, nya. Carl... <laughs> yeah they let you have animals in dorms if you get a note saying you need one i bet i could forge one i think i could get a rabbit or maybe a snake or maybe both would a snake eat the rabbit though yeah oh boy i think i'll leave all that up to you <laughs> she's so excited i don't want to disappoint her but i need to be real for a second yeah so you know I had to talk with Mr. Nya. He didn't tell you about the dumpster fire, did he, Nya? What? No, Nya. I don't want to be a dump damper on good news, but I need you to knock it out of the park these last few months of school, Nya. If you really want to go to Horns, we need that scholarship money, Nya. I know you can do it. Okay. I promise I'll try harder, Nya. I pat her on the back. Thank you. Thank you. Think you can handle a 14 hour drive to come home for the holidays, Nya? It's gonna be some treacherous ice roads to cross, Nya. And don't even get me started on the paranormal occurrences, Nya. Well, it'd be worth it if I get to see you, Nya. Oh, that's so cute. That's so cute. My eyes immediately well up with tears, Nya. Oh, Dad, don't ya? Sorry, I'm just very, very proud of you. Yeah. 
you're all grown up now and you're such a good person and i hope you know how important you are to me nya dad stop you're gonna make me cry too nya. it's too late honey it's happening nya. <laughs> i'm so dramatic dad i can't get tears of my burritos it's gonna make it taste sad <laughs> that's so true nya. <laughs> I pull Amanda in for a hug and a kiss on her forehead. I love you, kiddo, Nya. Love you too, Pops. Okay. That's the end of five minutes. In ten minutes, we'll do another Nya. Someone remind me in ten minutes. Someone remind me in ten minutes. So I'm going to forget. Hello, Amanda's dad. Oh, fuck. Hi, baby. Shit. Ugh. No. Oh, my God. Not the. F Bruh. It's me, your friend Craig, who loves sports. I have nice and smart children who are good at computers. Oh, man. Great to hear from you, buddy. What's up? I'm still strong. Ooh. Strong. I'm strong. Don't I know it? Say, I've been reading about whey protein. You use it all the time. Wait, you use that at all? I figured it'd help me develop a little bit more muscle. Yes, I know what it is. My children are having a tea party and they wanted to invite Amanda, but we can't find her on here. You're also invited. Physical invitation to follow. Cool. I'll, I'd love to come. I'll let Amanda know. Thank you, Amanda's dad. <gasps> He wants us to go to a tea party. How uh -huh, cute. Bro, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Mr. I'm gonna go with Hugo. Ooh. He's so tasty. Did I just say that? Did I just say tasty? Did I just say that Hugo is tasty? I can't believe I said that out loud. Ooh, fuck. Okay, anyway, whatever. He is. He's tasty. He's smart. I don't I like him. I navigate to Hugo's dad page to type out a message. I like smart people. I think smart people are attractive. Hey, Hugo, great seeing you at the barbecue. You want to hang out sometime? I wait for a few minutes before the computer dings. I'm so glad you messaged me. I definitely want to hang out sometime, but I have a favor to ask. Our class is going on a field trip to the aquarium today, and one of our chaperones called in sick. Is there any and is any possible way that you can come by and replace them? Oh shit! I completely understand if you don't want to or can't make it, but I'm gonna be honest with you here. It's in the it's in, what? It's the middle school class. I need as much help as I can get. Oof. I fucking hated middle school. <laughs> I hated middle school so much. I think about it for a moment, man, that's a lot of screaming kids that I'd be accountable for. And they're in middle school, arguably the worst age to be. <sighs> Amanda silently trudges into the kitchen and pours herself a bowl of cereal. Morning, Amanda. Morning, Pops. Hey, how was middle school for you? Bad, but nobody likes middle school. It's three years of bad acne, crying, and being generally terrible. Everyone sucks, no self-awareness. There's just a bunch of hormonal teenagers locked in a gross old building for 40 hours a week doing long division and stare, starting fights over. I don't know, pizza day, top 40s pops? Middle schoolers should be avoided at all costs. Ooh, accurate though. I don't remember. It was long ago, probably rode dinosaurs to class and bar bartered for lunch. With tiny skulls of animals we had slain. Oh my god, that's so funny. That's actually funny. You probably had to walk uphill in the snow both ways too. We liked it. See, middle schoolers are rep reprehensible. Wait, why are you asking about middle school? Oh, Mr. Vega requested my help to chaperone his middle school class to the aquarium. I just wanted to know what I was in for. Did you go to the aquarium? Are you kidding me? Our last field trip, I got to go on was to the clam chowder factory ew they didn't even give us clam chowder they gave us square pizza at a clam chowder factory oh is that why you won't eat clam chowder anymore no it's because bobby wellington threw up 
into one of the vats of clam chowder and I'm the only one who saw it happen? Ugh. That's so gross. It haunts me. Right, let's leave that story firmly in the past. Anyway, you should just do it. Mr. Vega sounds like he could really use the help. Plus, you gotta hang out with cool fish. Amanda, I get we I get kind of weird about aquariums. The ocean makes me nervous. Wait, are you worried that a whale is gonna pop out of the touch tank and swallow you whole? Don't you put your fear in my heart? <laughs> well, do they have penguins there? Yes, they have penguins there. And that's settled. Penguins outweigh fear of ocean. That's fair. I sit back down at the computer and let Hugo know that I'm available. He tells me to meet him at the aquarium and gives me the address. I grab my keys, kiss Amanda on the forehead before I head out. I freaking love penguins. I arrive at the aquarium to find that the school bus have be has beaten me there. Preteens huddle around their teachers in small groups, yelling at each other and goofing off. Every teacher looks like they're at their wit's end. Hugo jogs up to me, looking frazzled. I'm so glad you're here. Hugo! It's been, it's been a debacle all morning. We're shorthanded, and most of the kids won't stop screaming, as I'm sure you know is the case with all middle schoolers. I live through Amanda at 12. I'm far too familiar. Great. Well, it's you and me chaperoning a group of 10 kids. They're over here. Hugo walks me over to the gaggle of preteens who are all sitting on the ground playing with their phones. They're not kicking each other like some of the other groups, so we're off to a good start. Can you guys put your phones away? All the kids look up for a moment to stare at Hugo, then go back to texting. At least they're quiet. Too quiet. These guys are up to something. I can feel it. There's no way. They're too busy thinking about not getting food stuck in their braces to pull any stunts. It's middle school after all. Well, I'll see. The class starts filing into the aquarium and Hugo hands out massive stapled packets of paper to each kid. These are due at the end of the field trip. Yes, this will be for a grade. No, you can't borrow a pencil. The kids collectively groan and grab the sheets from Hugo. What's in the packet? Honestly, it's just some busy work so the teachers can have a moment of rep reprieve. I think one of the questions asks them to sit quietly for 10 minutes to think about the Great Barrier Reef. Oh my God. Teacher hacks. I like that. Bro, fuck middle school. It was literally the worst. I had my first kiss in middle school and literally I thought my stomach was going to explode. It hurt so bad. I kissed a boy for the first time. Blech. It was so bad. Wait, I thought you were an English teacher. What does the aquarium have to do with books? We just did a unit on the old man in the sea. Nothing quite like introducing the kids to a feudal, feudal? Pres... What is this word? Perseverance. Look at that. Look at that. Hooked on phonics shit. Boom. Look at me, baby. Hair flip. Feudal perseverance of human spirit by making them pet stingrays. It gives us time to check out the exhibits as well. Come on. They'll have a phenomenal section of tropical fish. While the kids sit on the floor and pretend to their assignment, while they text, Hugo and I wander over to a large fish tank with brightly colored fish. Hugo points to the brown and white fish along the spines. That's right, there's a lionfish. Did you know that their stomachs can expand up to 30 times in size? My crush started dating a friend of mine while I was pissed about- Ooh. <sighs> All right. You guys ready for another five minutes of nya? Starting right- yeah. I somehow was always late to class, even if I walked faster than everyone else in the same class. Yeah. Everyone was always in the same. Ew. Yeah. Weirdos. Yeah. Wow. Their spines are venomous too. Yeah. Ew. Nature is hardcore. You think that's bad? Take a look at this one over here. Yeah. Hugo points to a spiny, grumpy looking fish hanging out near the bottom of the tank. Yeah. That's a stonefish, the most venomous fish in the Nya. And they just like keep it in here, Nya? Oh, they're relatively harmless. So as long as you don't step on them, Nya. What happens if you step on them? Tissue 
necrosis. Yeah. Bro. Don't ever let me touch stonefish. Yeah, ever. Ever. Cool. Nature is yeah. Man, Hugo knows, seems to know a lot about fish. I feel the overwhelming need to impress him. Hey, see that fish over there, Nya? That Nya. Yeah, that's the... Fuck. Uh, American Long Nya. Yeah? Did you know that? Uh, this is the only species of fish known to develop clinical depression, yeah. Wait, are you serious, Nya? Serious? We're talking fish here. There's no time for jokes, Nya. <laughs> this dude is a fucking teacher. He believes me. <laughs> what an idiot. That's a clownfish. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. We lead, lead the kids into another room. Sharks, sea turtles, eels, and other marine life swims around in a massive floor to ceiling aquarium. The kids begin to trying to take selfies with the sharks. Nia. Hugo leaves my so side to separate two kids who started fighting over a Capri Sun. I walk around the room reading the tiny little blurbs about different fish swimming inside the enclosure. Nia. Well, it's not my fucking fault he sleeps here on the weekends and studies fucking fish. Nya. Like, that's his fucking problem. He's a weirdo. After a while, Nya, I look around and see Higo again. He's gazing up at the aquarium in childlike wonder. The ripples in the water cast blue, moving shadows across his face. Nya. For someone surrounded by angry hormonal preteens, he looks completely peaceful. He looks really cute in this light. I hope he doesn't notice me staring. Nya. Nya. I walk over to join him. Beautiful, isn't it?
I'm like reading. And it's like. Ugh. Why does it? I don't know why it does that. It's so annoying. Wait, long story short. Marvel, thank you so much for redeeming Kitty Cat. Preach. Big preach. Also, why is like, why is my character a little bitch baby? I am I totally love the fish tank. I they're like the touch tank. I love touch tanks. I think they're so fun. What a fucking bitch baby. See? Not so bad. Feels like slimy leather. Things get a lot less scary when you learn more about them, right? I dive my hand back into the touch tank and with a renewed vigor for the ocean life. I poke at some sea urchins and feel the hard carapace. Carpress. Carapace. It's a carapace. A horseshoe crab. Is that like the, it's like its shell? Carpress. Car. But it should just say shell. Oh my God. <sighs> My hand brushes against Hugo's <gasps> as we reach for the same anemone. I pull away blushing. Hugo smiles at me? <laughs> oh my god. Hey, you're supposed to be touching the fish. Sorry, I can get a little carried away some... Wait. That girl over there looks suspicious. Why is that? Are backpacks usually that wet? Hold on. <gasps> Susan stole a fish. What a dumb kid. Hugo runs after a middle schooler and catches her before she can make it to the exit. Wanna tell me what's in the bag? Uh, textbooks. Bitch, I'm not that fucking dumb. Wanna tell me what's really in the bag? Susan won't budge. Bitch. I walk over to Hugo and the girl. I think he might need a bag cop. Look, kid. <laughs> Whatever it is, it goes back in the touch tank now. If you're not a teacher. You can't tell me what to do. Yes, well, I am. Can you put the bag down? Next time, we won't say please. Oof. Shit. See how much of a bad cop I am? I'm great at this. Susan glares at Hugo for a moment before dropping her book bag on the floor. It lands with a wet slap. We stare at it for a moment before it starts to move. <gasps> Ew! Hugo leans down and unzips the backpack. A horseshoe crab frantically scuttles out of the and across the floor. An employee swoops in, swoops it up, and places it back in the tank. She gives us a disapproving look. Jesus, Susan, what was your plan? I was trying to free him to where? The outside where he was going to die. Susan, go back to your group. We'll discuss this later. What a fucking idiot ass kid. Oh my God. Yeah. Hands where we can see him. Susan sulks off, leaving me alone with Hugo. He gave me a pat on the shoulder. Middle schoolers have sticky hands. I doubt that's the first time that's happened here. Or the last. In the next room, we see a variety of smaller tanks. She sea urchins, tiny fish, and a rainbow. A beautiful underwater plant life surrounds us. That's actually really pretty. Look over here. Hugo points so. Hugo points so some. What? Is this a typo? Hugo points so some seahorses gathered at the. What? What is this sentence? <laughs> Hugo points some seahorses gathered at the bottom of the tank. One of them is in the middle of giving birth. It's actually a male seahorse. Sort of takes fatherhood to a new level, doesn't it? Hey, kids, come check this out. This male seahorse is giving birth. A low murmur of students. They just jump back on their phones. Fun fact. Male seahorses can even give birth and then get pregnant in the same day. Ew. Who the fuck would want that? No one. We thought we had it hard. <laughs> I wonder if they have to deal with their kids' awkward teenage years, too. All, however, thousand, many of them. Oh, my God, that would suck. You seem to know about marine life, Hugo. It's not really my specialty, but I do make it a point to learn as much as I possibly can whenever I can. 
I think that learning shouldn't end when you leave school. We should challenge ourselves to find out more about the things we don't understand every day of our lives. Because if you stop learning, I don't think you'll ever want to, you'll ever be able to grow or change as a person. Good point. But I still don't trust the ocean. We'll get there. We finally make our way over to my favorite part of the tour. The Arctic exhibit. Oh, I love penguins. Susan should try to steal one of those urchins. Just make sure she touches the points. You know what, Marvel? Maybe we should tell her that. Did we get to see penguins? Yes, we get to see penguins. <gasps> I love penguins. Oh, now this guy way back when that said he wanted like a dozen kids. I told him he'd better get a seahorse. <laughs> Karma, you did not say, say, swear, say, swear. You did not. You did not. <gasps> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Twelve, bruh. I can't even think about one. Hell, yes. Bro, I can't even think about one. <laughs> like, I'm not even joking. Nah. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. I could never. Like, seriously, I could never. Three max. Cheaper by that as an IRL, yeah. One of my best friends in college, she actually wants like five kids. I'm like, honey, how? Like you realize that you, you have to push them out. Or get them cut out. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Hell no. Last I heard, he's married, no kids, though. Oof. A group of kids run around the exhibit. They won't stop tapping on the glass of the puffin enclosure, trying to get their attention. For at least a few minutes, teachers, chaperones, and students alike seem to be having a great time. What was I so worried about? This isn't too bad. Hugo suddenly grabs my arm. Oh my god, there's a student in the penguin. <gasps> no. There's a student in the in the penguin enclosure, you guys. Wait, just kidding, it's very bad. Is it one of ours? It most certainly is. Molly Henderson. Susan's fr this fucking bitch. Bro, fuck Susan and her friends. I look over to the penguins and see a determined looking kid crouching behind a rock. She's hiding just out of sight of one of the employees. Over on the side of the enclosure, I see the door to the exhibit ajar. Was it unlocked this whole time? Bro, fucking Susan. We gotta stop her before the staff sees and bans her school for life. Hugo looks around. I'll create a distraction. Hugo runs towards the puffin exhibit and addresses the entire room. Everyone, everyone, everyone. I have an announcement. The whole room turns towards Hugo. Um... Here's a few facts you didn't know about penguins. Everyone just stares at Hugo, confused. This is my shot. I run into the enclosure, and I'm greeted by a cold blast of air. Ooh, I bet that feels nice. Psst, hey. The girl whips around to look at me. Her nose is pink from the cold. You can't be in here. There can you. I try to walk over to the girl, but the ground is so icy that I end up slipping. I catch myself before I hit the ground, but the girl still laughs at me. Contrary to belief, penguins are... Birds. Birds are traditionally known to fly, but penguins cannot. So I understand some confusion when we're discussing the birdness of penguins. Oh my god. It's like the all know dad jokes. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. The crowd is somewhat or somehow enraptured. Kid, what are you even doing? I'm letting the penguins go. They deserve freedom. Oh my god. Who called PETA? Who called PETA? 
Where are they even going to go? They're going to live in my closet. Look, I don't even have time to argue about this. We've got to get out of here. Not until I save a penguin. Bitch. Get the fuck out of the enclosure. Jeez. Little known facts is that penguins only live in cold climates. Uh, with some exceptions, they don't all live in cold climates if you're splitting hairs here. Did I mention that they don't fly? The crowd are starting to lose interest. I'm running out of time. I have chocolate. I'm so happy right now. Mm. I love chocolate. Chocolate break. Bribe her? Ew. No. I'm not bribing this stupid ass kid. I'll try to relate to her. Think back to it to the time I released all of the feeder mice from the pet store. It was a disaster. I was six, but it was a disaster. Molly, you know, life can be cruel. Money. Give me money. Bitch! I hate kids, bro. I fucking hate them sometimes. Like, why? Give me money, bitch. Do you deserve money? No. Sorry, I was just finishing chewing before I started talking. This kid wants fucking money. Molly, thanks for a second. Okay, well, give it to me right now. Bitch. Oh my God. I reached in my pocket and pulled out everything I have, examining each bill. Okay, well, I have 12 and some change, but there's also a button here. Is that enough? Pay me the other eight later. We have a deal. We moved to shake on our agreement before I suddenly realized there's a wave of penguins on their way out of the enclosure. <gasps> We're gonna have to block these birds. Oh my god. 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 I don't know what to do. <gasps> oh my god, you guys. What? This is fucking hilarious. Oh, fuck. You guys, no, I'm going to fail. I'm failing. Oh, my God, you guys, I'm going to fail. I'm failing. No! Oh my god. Zero ping was escaped. Fuck on me, bitches. Yes! S plus, baby.
Whew. Glad that was over. Just in time to... Looks like Hugo's wrapping up his div diver diversion hair penguin speech. And that's why I think penguins are one of the best animals in the world. A few people in the audience clap out of sense of duty. Everyone starts disappearing. Hugo spots us from across the way and runs over. Molly, what were you doing in there? I was liberating the animals, Mr. Vega. You realize that penguins can only survive in the Arctic temperatures, right? We would have had a dead penguin on your hands. Well, um, it was the thought that counts. Bitch, the fuck are you? She's so dumb. No, Molly, it wasn't. Molly turns to me. You owe me $8. What? Just, I'll pay you later, kid. Molly runs off towards Susan, I suppose, so that they can compare animal notes. You're not off the hook, Molly. Aaron, did you bribe a child? Did I bribe a child? Listen, man, we've all got dark things in our lives. I'm not the young, bright-eyed youth I used to be. Person believed in a world where you wouldn't have to bribe children to save Penguin. The me today knows different. I only wish I could go back. Just, let's just get the through, through the day and get out of here. Oh. Bro, this was a disaster. The day finally coming to a close, the whole field trip is ushered through the gift shop and we make our way back to the school buses. As we leave the aquarium, this kids load up on the buses. Hugo pulls me aside. Hey, Aaron, thanks for helping me out today. You're a lifesaver. Eh, it was no problem. It was actually kind of fun. Let me take you out next time to make it up to you. You like cheese boards? The fuck is this guy like 60? Great. Well, I gotta go to make sure the kids don't steal anything else. See you around. I do actually like a good cheese board, to be honest. That means I'm 60. Fuck on me, bro. I walk inside to find the house empty. Mm, I wonder where the panda is at. Before I know it, Amanda pops in through the front door. What you up to tonight? Just doing some homework. How was the aquarium? It was an adventure. Some kid tried to steal a penguin. We've all been there. I had to run in and grab her before any of the employees saw. You, gotta, you had you got to go into the penguin enclosure? Did you steal a penguin for us? Amanda. No penguins were stolen thanks to the, the valiant efforts of myself and Mr. Vega. It was nice getting to spend some time with Hugo, though. I'm surprised he helps complete a cup over op. Usually kind of a, kind of a what? Kind of a stick in the mud. It's actually pretty cool. I had a good time with them. All right, too much adventure for me today. I'm going to go rest my eyes. You mean take a nap? There's a difference. You'll learn when you become a father. <gasps> Bro. <gasps> B! All right, well, fuck you, Hugo. I'm not going to your fucking cheese board shit. Fuck you. Hey, um, Karang? You want to, like, hang? <laughs> I'm literally the worst. Hey, dude, I've got the runs. Oh, what? Oh, I just got the thing. I'll head over to... Wait, does he wait, does he mean like diarrhea? Or does he mean like he's like ready to go for a run? I'll head to the store and grab you a real chunky milkshake, a cherry licorice, and a book of the word jumbles that I find helpful in strenuous times such as these. What? Wouldn't that make it worse? Oh, if it's for diarrhea, milkshakes are just comforting. Wait, why are we talking about this? By I've got the runs, I meant like I feel like running off. Oh. Mm. Mm hmm. <sighs> okay. So he's got running on his mind. Okay. 
want to come to the gym with me? Listen, I... Sure. <laughs> Why do I feel less excited about that than getting you home remedies for diarrhea? Come on, man. It'll be fun. You know what? Sure. When are we doing this? There's 30 more minutes left in this meat hell marathon. I'm outside right now. Oh, fuck. Okay, I'm warming up. Oh, my God. Don't rush me, Craig. I'm not even warmed up yet. Isn't it bad to start running when you're when you have like cold muscles? But at least let me see if Betty gets away from the wolves in time to get her so so pressada so pressada so so press so, so pressada. I don't know how to say this. Wrap cheesecake out of the oven. Oh, my God. We're, I'm going to go running, bro. I'm going to have a fucking heart attack. Oh, shit. The gym just installed these new virtual jogging treadmills. We'll feel like we're running outdoors. Okay. You can see other runners on your screen, too. Let's try this out together. Another runners. Will I be able to keep up? Don't worry. We're here to cheer each other on. I'll be right here with you. Just get a rhythm going. Keep your heart rate up. And don't overexert yourself. We'll do great. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. What do I do? Huh? What do I do? Oh, my God. I'm doing it. Oh, my God. I'm doing it. Oh, what does this mean? What was this eggplant? What was the eggplant? What does that mean? Oh my god, I'm gonna die. Oh my god, I'm gonna freaking keel over. I'm gonna keel over. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's a fucking workout trying to press this fucking button. Oh my god. Oh my god, what do I do? What am I doing? Uh, uh, okay. Oh, 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 oh. Eggplant! I don't know what this means, but eggplant! Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, my fucking finger's getting tired. Oh my god. What do I do? I'm just. Okay. Oh my god, I'm concentrating way too hard on this. But I'm scared. I'm scared I'm gonna like exert myself and have to go to the hospital. Oh my god, look, we're running by the beach! Oh! Ugh. Oh, fuck, okay. <laughs> I don't know, dude, this is weird. Is this right? Is this, is this, is this what I'm supposed to do? Is this bad? Oh my god, this has been a minute and 55 seconds. Fuck me. Oh my god, please give me a downhill. Please. Please. Bro. Bro, look how fast I'm going. Oh my god, my fucking heart rate is fucked. Probably gonna go to the hospital. Oh my god, how is he running so fucking fast? Oh my god, how is he running so fast? No, that's normal. It's normal to go to 140. Are you fucking kidding me? Carm, that's ridiculous. Wait, exercising or exercising? You know what I'm saying? Like... Okay, or just exercising in like a general sense. Oh my God. Oh my God, I made it. <gasps> Oh my god! S plus plus! Yes! Okay, we did it, you guys. We did it. We got S plus plus. Way to go. Yes, I fucking did.
It's me, your friend Craig, who loves sports. What? Oh! Oh! Okay. We're going to talk to Hugo, and we're going to go um, eat a cheese board. <laughs> I should take Hugo up on his offer to hang out, but I have lot, I had a lot of fun with him at the aquarium. I tap out a message to him on dad book. He still want a cheese board? Colin is still being a homogenous shithead. He won't stop sending the same picture of Jackie Chan in a mesh shirt to his printer. And it's a nice picture, but it's wasting all my paper. Oh! <gasps> Hugo? Mm. Whoops, sorry. Meant that for another teacher, but seriously, he's insufferable. There's pictures of Jackie Chan everywhere. Sable cover for me. My Jackie Chan scrapbook is a little light on the content, and I think this would be really rounded out. <laughs> let me get back to you after class ends. Oh my God, that's so funny. Well, let me guess there's only one thing to do now dad nap. I hop in the couch and turn on some antique road warrior for background noise i got this ornate cabinet from a yard sale for five dollars in 1982 to be told that it once belonged to a confederate general is a huge surprise this will feed my tribe for weeks i really like the way the appraiser's voice echoes through the mouthpiece of his leather armor bondage gear maybe this is that asmr thing amanda keeps telling me about i drift off to sleep Hey, sorry about that. Colin's in the principal's office now. He says he knows Jackie Chan personally and that Jackie won't be happy to hear this. I get off work in a little while I continue to be very serious about the cheese boards. Okay. Yes, yeah, so am I. Hugo and I work out the details. Are we going to be there in a couple hours? Ah! Okay. I'm not excited you were. Amanda walks in the door just as I'm about to leave. What's up, Buttercup? Just getting home from school. Where are you going? Oh, I have a meeting with the board. The board? Um, a cheese board is what I meant. I'm getting cheese with your teacher. Will you be able to fend for yourself until dinner time? Yeah, I'll live, but only if you can talk him into going easy on me for the final. Sorry, buddy, but that ball's in your court. What's in my court, you ask? Just a variety of delicious cheeses, meats, and their accompanying crackers. Maybe some olive, a little bit of fig jam. Yes, 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 I get it. You're excited about the cheese. Sweetie, you'll get it one day, but now I gotta go see a man about some... What? Manchego? Manchego? Ma manch manch ego i don't i don't fucking know how to say this word please leave okay bye oh my god hi hugo what's up i walk into a quaint french diner and hugo waves me down to a booth in the corner he looks really tired long day every day is a long day when you teach middle schoolers colin started a gambling ring the pictures of jackie chan were just a cover he's bartering in those little rubber band bracelets that are also shapes oh i remember those is that the one the parents think means sex stuff those ones yeah but the reports are just the sensationalists new new media capitalizing on the fears of suburban parents as usual <sighs> at least i hope yikes right now i'm very ready for some fine wine and some delicious cheese the waitress stops by and takes our order for the biggest cheese plate you have for the love of god just please put your cheese in my mouth and remind us and recommends us some wine i love cheese do you want a scoreboard for trivia there's trivia yep we're starting in a few moments pretty much everyone here is playing we'd love to play right Aaron? yeah Mm-hmm. I'm great at trivia. I'm like a star when it comes to trivia. Mm -hmm. The waitress hands us a score card and a few pencils before leaving. I might not much be. Um, I might not be much help here. I'm not very good at being smart. I guess. 
Come on, I doubt it'll be too hard. Aaron, no. Why is the coffee shop man here? I just turned to see Matt and Brian here with their daughters looking like they're ready for trivia. They've come up to our table to greet us. Fuck. Would you guys fuck off? I'm trying to date a really hot teacher. <laughs> you guys are all here for the old question and answer game? Yep, we come here every week, but Brian and Daisy carry the team. Carmen, Sita, and I are just here for the cheese. Provolone 2, Lost in New York, have been reigning champions for the last two months. Man, Brian's great at trivia too. That raises the stakes. Great name though. Solid team name. That Carmen Sita's claim to fame. It hurts me how I am good at puns. Like father, like daughter. You guys gonna try to give us a run for our money? We'll see what we can do. The cheese will taste so much better with a side victory. <gasps> he loves it. He loved it. He loved it. Hugo and I fist bump fist. We bump fist. Ah! We bumped fists, you guys. You guys know what that means. We're going to share some cheese. Ah! Tag team champions. We'll have to think of a good team name, but I think this will be fun. Good luck. Brian and Matt and their daughters head back to their table. Well, I guess we need a name. Got any good ideas? <laughs> Real Munsters. Harvati like it's 1999. <laughs> I love this. Harvati. The waitress comes by with our cheese board and we reveal in we revel in its glory. Already I can see a piece of cheddar with my name on it. I pair it with some strawberry preserves and slide into dairy-induced ecstasy. There's such a fine variety of cheese and charcuterie that I'm positively overwhelmed. A quick dip into the seasoned nuts, a slice of savory yet salty gouda, or perhaps a focaccia crisp topped with honey and goat cheese. I'm so happy. Hugo raises his glass at me. Cheers to cheese. Hey, hey. A middle-aged man with a backwards baseball cap sun and sunglasses and cargo shorts jog out of the back with his, with the frenetic, frenetic energy of a radio DJ. Everybody ready for some trivia. The restaurant cheers. Oh, man, looks like everyone's really into this. Fuck. I suck at trivia. That's what I like to hear. For those of you who don't know me, I am Quizmaster Quinn. My actual name's Richard. I just like the alliteration. Oh my goodness. It's not cool if you have to explain it, Richard. Fucking idiots. Harvati is one of my favorite cheeses. Really, Carm? Oh my gosh. More cheers. I see some of you brought your children here tonight. That's cool. My children won't speak to me. Awkward. Hi, Zircon. I'm just joking around. Classic Quizmaster Quinn humor. It's actually my wife that won't speak to me. She doesn't want kids. Yo, somebody please remove this fucking dude from the stage, please. So let's get to some cool questions. First category is literature. Excellent. You know who loved literature? My dead father. I looked up to him so much. Bro, can, please remove this microphone. Remove it. More jokes. Classic Quinn Quizmaster Quips. Quips? Is it Quips or Quips? Is it Quips? Bro, fuck this dude, I swear. Just trying to keep it light here, folks. Just like I thought my wife was the light of my life. <sighs> fuck. I took from my water bottle. Bro, get this guy off the stage, please. Like, I'm not even joking. He's so embarrassing. He's so embarrassing. Here you go. You, you got this literature stuff, right? Does Franz Kafka have an irrational fear of one day waking up as a large, grotesque, insect-like creature? Who is Franz Kafka? All I know is Kafka from Final Fantasy. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> uh, this is 
is awkward. This is awkward. Yes. This is this is the continent that encompasses the realms of Gondor, Rohan, Mordor, and Lothrian. Other notable sites include Isengard, the Mirkwood, and Rivendell. What is the elvish name for this continent? Ooh. Lamoria. What? I thought I really thought that it was Lamoria. Oh my god. Please no one tell Hubs because like he loves fucking he loves Lord of the Rings. I swear to God, if I got that wrong, he's probably gonna divorce my ass. Who was the writer that created Tarzan and John Catter, creator of Mars? I don't fucking know. Who is it, you guys? Edgar R Yes! Okay. Edmund. Edmund Dantes is better known as this man. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. I suck at this. I don't know. Um, two. Yes! Okay. Oh, this guy is fucked. <sighs> but people can't tell you just to get over it. You're lactose intolerance, right? And nobody's like, you have you tried exercising to get rid of your de debilitating dairy allergy? Or do you, or you just need to choose to not let your throat close up when you eat brie? Mm. Mm. Anything? Does that scan? I'm trying to workshop my routine here. Oh. He wanders off to another table. Who wants to start the next round? More cheers from the audience. The next round is cinema. Oh man, I love movies. Sometimes I'll retreat into them for days on end because obsessing over a fictional universe is easier than engaging with my real emotions and problems. Accurate. Isn't that so accurate and factual? Mm -mm. <laughs> Why do you think I obsess over video games? Uh. Anyway, Frodo Baggins, am I right? Is he okay? What? I think it's just his character, I hope. How's your cinema? Spotty, I don't know a lot about movies, but if there's any questions about bad horror movies, I can be of service. That's an interesting one. It's a bit of a guilty pleasure. He likes bad horror movies. I love that. In Return of the Jedi, what does Luke ask Leia if she remembers? Oh, fuck. In what? Did he say Fallen Order? Oh, my God. What entertainer makes a fourth while breaking appearance in the film Gremlins 2? I don't fucking know. I've never seen Gremlins. Oh, no, I've never seen Gremlins 2. I don't know. Which of these 80 horror movies dies not feature an Indian barrel ground as part of its setting? I don't fucking know. Is it Pet Cemetery? <gasps> Guys, I suck at this game. Seems like we're doing pretty well, but we're neck and neck with Brian and Matt's team. Those guys are pros. I look over the, their table and give them a friendly but competitive nod. I lock eyes with Brian. He gives, he gets a much sterner nod. And the next category is wrestling. Fuck. Okay, we're totally boned. Hugo grabs my arm. Wait, I got this. 
what? Man, you know who I would want to wrestle with? Literally anyone. I crave human interaction. Please put me in a chokehold. Okay, bro, this guy needs to get hugged. Someone needs to hug this man. Like, I just... like this please it has been so long since i've been held oh that's not what i was about to say <laughs> i was about to say something else inappropriate uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh that's awkward okay i i only process my emotions by making jokes out of them Please take the microphone away from this guy. I. Let's get the quiz started. Remember that this is the lightning round. The first people to answer gets the points. I'll look over to Hugo. He's focused. He's in it to win it. Question one. This was the original name of Stone Cold Steve Austin in his debut for WWE. Hand shoots up. Yes. The enthusiastic one over there. Steve Austin debuted as the ringmaster. That is correct. Ooh. Next question. The city was the location of the first ever WrestleMania. Hugo's can shoots up again. Yes. The one who looks like he has known the answer for his entire life. The first WrestleMania was held in New York City, New York at Madison Square Garden in 1985. Another correct answer. Yes. Hugo's destroying these answers. He's so passionate about this. Ugh. I've never seen him act like this before. It's honestly kind of hot. Oh my god. Oh, a tough one. This title match went down in history as one of the shortest match at WrestleMania to date. Hugo jumps up more excited than I've ever seen him. Carbo versus Kane. Oh! The answer is actually Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus at WrestleMania 28. No, that's absolutely wrong. The real record of is Chavo Giro versus Kane WrestleMania 24, March 30th, 2008. Kane, Kane took down Chavo with one chokehold slam and pinned him for three count. I will not stand for this travesty. Hey, man, I'm just reading from the card here. I don't actually write these. Well, you're still wrong. What are you, my ex-wife? <gasps> That's so sad. The crowd erupts in laughter. Hugo blushes. He retreats back to his chair. Fine. Wow. Hugo seems really fired up about that. Where do you get such an encyclopedic knowledge of wrestling? How do you know so much about wrestling? Oh, I, you know, you just pick up stuff. Sounds suspect, but it seems like he doesn't want to talk about it. I turn my attention back to Quizmaster. All right, all right, all right, all right. Looks like we're down to the final category, and it's close one between Provolone 2, Lost in New York, Brian and Matt, high five. And our body like it's 1999. Fuck yeah, let's go. Hugh and I high five. We look over to Brian and Matt. Carmen, Cisa, and Daisy all playfully give us thumbs up and stick their tongues out. I eat a big chunk of cheddar without breaking eye contact to show them how serious I am. The final category is cool animals. Ooh, yes. Animals, huh? I can never take care of another living thing. Hell, I can barely take care of myself. I'm falling apart. Bro, can you remove this man? Remove this man, please. Anyway, here's the questions. The Canary Islands were named after what kind of animal? A bird. What? Isn't a canary a bird? What is the last animal that appears in the dictionary? Shut up. What animal has the thickest concentration of fur in nature? Polar bear or otter? I say polar bear. What? 
All right, I'm just going to come around and collect your scorecards, and we'll see who come on. <gasps> Bro, I think we lost. The winning team gets 25 gift card to Phil's Auto Care. If you need a car part, Phil, Phil's will fulfill all your... That's so fucking dumb. Everyone oohs and ahs. God, I want the gift card. The quiz master goes in the back to tally up the score. I pick out what's left of our cheese plate. There's a bit of brie here that tastes absolutely divine on a cracker with a little bit of honey and dried apricot. So what are your plans after a big win? Mm, I'll probably retire, take Amanda somewhere tropical, drink something out of a coconut. Always wanted to do that. What about you? Probably take my winnings to Colin's gambling ring. Bet it all on black. Walk out of there with more rubber bands in the shape of animals than I know what to do with. <laughs> Bold, but I like your style. You want the last piece of Hivati? Nah, that's all you. You definitely earned it. After a couple minutes, dude, I don't think we, I don't think we won. Everyone will immediately quiet down, waiting with bated breaths for the results. Who will win the coveted gift card? Really hope it's us. Hey, everyone, we've had a great night. Lots of goofs, lots of laughs, a little bit of light crying in the back but that's neither here nor there it was a close game but the winner of tonight's trivia contest is no fuck <sighs> bro he hates us god i can't do this anymore please just take your gift card brian and matt run up to the coupon grab the coupon and bow to the roaring applause <laughs> Dude, this guy is weird, Marvel, of the crowd. I do my best to convey to Hugo a sense of appreciation for his hard work at trivia with only eyebrow raises and a shoulder shrug. We'll get him next time, Aaron. They haven't heard the last of Harvati like it's 1999. Hugo and I walk towards the cul-de-sac, full of cheese and a sense of defeat. Brian's good, but I saw some tactical weakness there, which I think we can exploit for the next trivia night. He seemed weak on literature. I think we can establish ourselves early on. It would hurt the team morale. Maybe it would get them more focused on cheese than winning. You're right. Next time we'll be prepared. Shame about that wrestling question, though. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I plan to write a strongly worded letter to whoever employed that man. Come on. There's got to be a story there. What do you mean? You didn't even stop to think you pulled that wrestling knowledge out of you didn't even stop to think. You pulled that wrestling knowledge out like you were there at the ring yourself. Oh, it's just stuff I know. Okay. All right. But hey, good trivia night. Let's get the band back together soon. Certainly. Hugo and I say our goodbye and make our way home. God. Yuck. It only takes me a minute to walk back home. Amanda's sitting on the couch reading a book about female photographers. Wow, I thought you didn't like reading. I don't. This book is all pictures. And even then, my patience is being taught. Right. <laughs> Did you get to eat all the cheese your little heart desired? I'm a happy little cheese monster. But I made sure to leave room for dinner. Who wants breakfast for dinner? Hash browns. Okay. Toast dipped in egg. All blueberry pancakes well only if you help me make them you know i'm the world's best blueberry sprinkler and only and also totally amazing at heating up the maple syrup in the microwave now tell me all about that cheese board amanda and i spend the evening cooking an elaborate breakfast with everything we can find inside the fridge that was the worst date ever we're gonna get like an f Bro. Well, it's been a long day. I'm just about to get ready to pack it in after a few bites of ice cream from the freezer. I turn off all the lights and walk down the hall to my room. I wonder if Amanda's still awake. That kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound, but I can't quite make it out what it is. I get a little closer. Is she crying? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda. The crying immediately stops. Not right now. Her voice sounds strange. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. Open the door. 
In the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed, knees hugged up against her body. Is everything okay? I don't want to talk about it. Did something happen? No, nothing happened. Go away. Okay. All right. I'll leave you be. I back out of the room and close the door gently behind me. She immediately starts crying again. Oh, wow. I have no idea what has her so upset. She's totally, she seemed totally normal. I feel awful just leaving her cry, but I also get the feeling that if I tried to do anything else, it would only have made her more upset. I can't stop mentally cycling through all the sorts of awful things she could be dealing with right now. More than anything, I just want her to be happy and safe. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I finally do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. After a very long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever's bothering her. About 10 minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. Drops a frozen waffle into the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on at school today? No. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls a toaster lever and takes its still freezer burned waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Oh, fuck. Bitch, don't fucking slam doors in my house. Ooh. Bitch. Mm mm. Okay. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully, that blows over and things are back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at a picture of Amanda and I hanging on a wall. And I'm teaching her how to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she would get up and try it again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. Aw, that's cute. As I put the bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream and it was like nothing even happened. Fair. After giving it a bit, though... A bit of thought, I decided that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse, but I have an idea. I started rummaging around for ingredients. I hear Amanda walk in the door instead of, and instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline to her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin. What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I wanted to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when you when I know something's wrong and I get even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So just whatever it is, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who wants you to be happy. Honey, you know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language we both understand. I pull a cake out of the refrigerator and put it on the table. Hopefully the frosting has set by now. Ta-da! Dad. Oh, that's so cute. Dude. This is so cute. This is actually really cute. It took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting somewhere around sad and had to start over. And this is beautiful. It's strawberry. Amanda gives me a big old hug. I grab some plates and forks and serve us some delicious cake. So, it's really stupid. What is it? This whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately. There's just, I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. Listening? Do you want me to, make, do you want me to take notes? I got to start from the top. So, you know how Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California, right? Emma R. The best friend. Got it. Anyways, ever since she got the acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? She's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P. I just thought it was all in my head for a while, but then I found out that Rose M, that both of the Emmas, Grace and Noah, all went to the party at McKenzie F's. On the same night, they all told me that they were busy studying for Cal a Calc AB final. Yikes. So another important piece of information is, uh, God, it's embarrassing. I, um, have a crush on Noah and that's the thing. What? Oh, 
I had no idea. I definitely didn't know that, okay? You're a bad liar. So are you. <laughs> I learned from the words. <laughs> Anyways, so the only person I told about the crush was Emma R, and she promised not to tell anyone. I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama, so I kept quiet and kept going about my business. Fantasize. And then one day I, I invite everyone out to get nachos at the mall and after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones down for like more than 60 seconds, they all say that they were busy like simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips and I really, really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. So I go to the mall anyway to get the food court and who do I see there? But Grace, Emma R, Emma P and Noah all hanging out together and eating nachos without me what it gets better i'm standing by the escalators watching them and i realize that noah has his arm around emma r which is kind of weird right but then they kiss <gasps> drama why am i so invested in this right now like i'm too invested too invested no Yes, I know. So I storm over there and I'm like, hey. And Grace drops a nacho on her shirt because of course she does. And Emma R just like glares at me. Grace, Grace, Grace. Nothing's coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the gossipy one. I know. Grace is the one that no one really likes. Or I guess that's me now. But anyway, no one will say anything and I'm just like, you guys suck, which I which I realize is not the most eloquent thing to say, but like I was very angry and really embarrassed. I just wanted to get out of there. So I left without nachos, might I add, which only further contributed to the shitty day. And immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat asking them why they were being so weird. And I wrote another one to Emma R asking how long the Noah thing's been going on and sorry, I know this is a lot. Are you still following? Which Emma's are okay. Get a load of this. Okay? Ready, guys? You guys ready for this gossip? Ready, chat? Ready? Okay. Emma R says, you know what? Let me just let me just read it. I'm really invested into this conversation. Like, I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm really invested. Bro, Emma R, bitch. Okay? What a bitch. I literally want to punch her in the face. She's literally the worst. I could die right now. I'm too invested. <laughs> it's really bad. It's really bad. It's really bad. You know what? It's okay. It's really bad. But it's okay. Like I said. Can you believe that? I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, do I not understand what she's talking about. This is beyond me, but I am trying my best to be supportive. They were dating in secret for like months. <gasps> what a fucking bitch. So I told her that she's being a real terrible friend. And she was like, well, if you think that I'm being so terrible, then just stop being my friend. And I was like, okay. And then she left me on read. <gasps> Bro, she left you on read. I fucking hate that. And then, wait, left me on read. What is that? Oh, like she saw my message, didn't reply. And I know because they're like read receipts. I don't know what read receipts are, but I'm gonna not to pretend that I understand. Gotcha. Dude, what a fucking bitch. I just wanna rip her hair out. <laughs> so while all this is happening, I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am because she's at least being kind of reasonable. And I'm venting to her about how pissed I am at everyone and stuff. And then out of nowhere, Noah texts me and it's like, how could you say that about me? And I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P screenshotted everything. And I told her uh, to the group chat that I got kicked out of. <gasps> All right. I think you lost me at screenshots, but that definitely sounds bad. There's so much more, but honestly, it's just really stupid teenage stuff. The bottom line is that everyone dropped me. Half of my grade hates me. And now I have no friends. Amanda. Sorry. I almost expected it from everyone else, but. Emma R, she's been there since dad died. Can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. Not even that mad she's dating Noah. I'm just upset that she lied to me for so long. Amanda stabs at the remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? 
Why did everyone just suddenly decide I'm not cool? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. Oh my God, I hate it. I hate being a teenager. I would never fucking, I would never go back, you guys. Like, <laughs> if someone was like, I'll give you like $10 million to go back to be a teenager right now, I'd be like, fuck you. No. As mad as I am at everyone, like, I miss them. I mean, it looks so dejected. I almost can't take it. What could I possibly say to help? Anyways, that's it. That's the whole sword, sordid tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot goss. Would I go back with the knowledge that I have now? Ooh. But the thing is, Carm, if you go back with the knowledge that you have now, you might not be in the same situation you are now. That's the problem. If I could go back. No, I still wouldn't go back because fucking teenagers suck. <laughs> wow. I know it's pretty dumb. No, it's a stupid thing to be upset over, Amanda. Your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. <sighs> I guess. Unless you secretly have been a robot who's been approximating human feelings this whole time. Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long, long time ago. But seriously, I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. When you get older, you start realizing the sort of people you want to associate yourself with. Do you really want to surround yourself with people who would do something like that to their friend? It takes a lot of work to find and maintain meaningful friendships. It took me a long time to figure that out about myself, and I wish I learned it sooner. If the other person isn't putting in the effort and to show you how much they care, it's not worth it. You're not beholden to their being their friend. Ultimately, I think this says way more about their character than it does about yours. Because you're amazing, and if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. I'll keep that in mind. Look down at the table. Did we just eat that whole cake? Yes, we did just eat the whole cake. Yep, good talk. <laughs> Cute. Amanda gets up to her room. Before she closes the door, she turns around. Hey, Pops. Yeah? Thank you. You are always welcome. Love you, Amanda. Oh, I'm going to cry. I'm not going to cry. But I want to, but I don't want to, but I do, but I don't. You know what I'm saying? Okay, brief ad intermission while I blow my nose. Okay? I will be right back. I will be right back.
Okay, we're back. Why are you rioting? Why are you doing that? Hmm? Why are you rioting? I didn't do anything for you guys to riot. Why are you doing this to me? <gasps> Freaking rude. All right. It's okay. You can riot all day long. Riot, 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 riot. Okay. Oh? Hey, are you up to anything tonight? Hugo and I were planning to to the art walk downtown and you were we were wondering if you would care to accompany us. I would normally write a longer letter hand, but I ran out of distressed parchment paper. Well, why can't I see Damien and Hugo's chat? I hacker? I don't even have a hacker alias. The feds are gonna bust down my door at any moment. I've gotta destroy this computer. Aaron, this is a group chat? Oh, thank God. Do either of you know how to destroy a computer? So dumb. You can run Derek's boot and nuke from the startup flash drive, but once you've done that, it's best to physically destroy the platters altogether. Um, the Victorians were well-versed in information security. Aaron, do you want to go to some sort of, to see some art or not? He's smart. That sounds great. Okay, but I wanna. Yes, I wanna go. I wanna. Yes, I wanna attend this party. Hi, Craig. Uh, coffee time. You know, dads of coffee. Gonna bring myself something black as midnight on the moonless night. I put on a fresh pot and work on a few word jumbles while I wait for it to brew. Hey, this one spells sorrow. Dad, ready for today? I'm ready for every day, sweetie. Gonna tackle it head on. No. Are you ready for that thing that we're gonna do today? That thing you promised you'd do? Honey, I already told you that I'm not gonna throw away my Tom Clancy novels. They're just stacked in the living room. I keep bumping into them and knocking them over. You don't even read them. Wait, no, that's not what I'm here about. The tea party, Dad. Nope, I don't remember that. Craig's kids, that hand drawn imitation. Amanda walks over to the fridge and comes back with a hand-drawn invitation on a sheet of computer paper inviting Amanda and Amanda's dad to tea party. They spelled cordially wrong. Just put on some going outside pants and let's get going. I can go outside in sweatpants. Nothing's stopping me. Dad, I just... I'll see you in a minute. Fuck authority. <laughs> put on some going outside pants. Fuck. Thank you for coming to our tea party. I do my best bow and, and present my daughter who thinks, thanks them with a curtsy. This way, please. Fuck. Why is this motherfucker always where I'm at? Briar and Hazel lead us to a small table with tiny chairs. Some are occupied by stuffed animals and Matt and his daughter, Carmen Zitha, are here too. Matt raises a comically small plastic teacup at me. Hey, dude. How's the tea? The imaginary tea is absolutely wonderful. I taste a hint of lemongrass. Hello, Carmencita. Hello, Mr. Amanda's dad. <laughs> Please have a seat. I sit between Amanda and Matt. I don't think I'm going to be able to get out of this chair. Hi, everyone. I turn to see Daisy and Brian enter the backyard and take a seat next to us. Fuck. I fucking hate this guy, bro. Fuck this dude. I don't like him. He annoys me. Sorry we're late. Daisy made me put on my going outside pants. See, Amanda? Gives me a knowing look and I return to ob obliging wink. She rolls her eyes. Is that really something your daughter has to pressure you into, Brian? I give Amanda another even more exaggerated wink. She rolls her eyes even harder. Thank you for taking your time out of your busy schedules for some high tea. Now, if you all will put on your designated tiaras, there are little tiaras on everyone's plates. Well, except for Brian's. His is a softball helmet. Oh, we ran out of tiaras. 
I don't think this is going to fit me, but I appreciate the thought. Dad, you're royalty. Please act like it. Ryan tries to balance the ill-fitting softball helmet on the top of his head, but it immediately tumbles off into the bushes. I'll get that later. Hey, everyone. Oh, my God. Hi, Zenny Krang. Uh, comes out with a teapot and a tray of sandwich cookies. That's so cute. He's cute. Dad, is the tea ready? Uh, yeah, it's uh, been steeping for a while. Awesome. Would you girls like to serve our guests tea? No, thank you. We'd much appreciate our servants' help. Damn. Craig leans over to me. That's me. Craig places teacups in front of all of us and a single sandwich cookie onto our, each of our plates. He pours some tea into my cup. Hmm. Awfully f fluorescent for tea. I clink my cup with mats and take a sip. Good lemonade. It's tea. Right. Very good tea. I lean over to Amanda, who's happily enjoying her tea. So, what do we do at tea parties? We enjoy the splendors of upper-class society, Father. She takes a dainty bite of her sandwich cookie. Marvelous. So, the meaning of princesses has been called to order. Hear, hear. But I'm a warrior princess. I hunt and stuff. And I have, like, a really cool sword. Can I be a space princess? I'll allow it. Oh my God, this is amazing. If tea parties were like this, I would 100% have gone to tea parties. I would have 100% have gone to them. And I will be a rock star princess. And I'm also a space princess. Can there be more than one? Space is pretty big, don't you think? I changed my mind. I want to be a space princess too. Dad, what are you? Do I get to be a princess? Duh. Well, I guess that makes me... Hacker princess. I surf the internet. I surf the information superhighway on my cyber deck, hacking into mainframes and unleashing the havoc on the mega corpse of the dystopian Neo Metropolis. It's pretty fucking good. I also rollerblade everywhere. I think the landscaper and the general contracting princess. Barista princess reporting for duty. Hey everyone, CrossFit princess here. Oh my god, that's so fucking cute. Why is everyone so cute in this game? Why? Now, now, servant, if it weren't for the princess uprising, it would be you serving me. We sip tea for a little longer and then the girls run off to fight dinosaurs as space rock warrior princesses, I think. They grew up so fast. It was like yesterday I was helping Amanda throw her own tea parties. Did she make you a servant too? You betcha. Carmen Sita actually may actually brew tea for hours. Pitfalls of owning a coffee shop. Pitfall, your custom blends are amazing. That hibiscus one you gave me a while back was choice. Aw, oh, thanks. It was really nice the girls were getting along. Yeah, I'm really glad we moved to this community. We are too. Amanda's been kind of a role model to them, you know? I hadn't even realized, and I had didn't even know if Amanda does either, but I guess they're right. All the girls in the neighborhood look up to her. She seems to go out of her way to play with them. I'm so proud of her. Better not you better not proud dad cry at this tea party, Aaron. I brought extra word jumbles if anyone wants to kill some time while the girls play. I want to hang out with Craig. Day rolls on and the girls all get tuckered out. Amanda spends her the whole day playing with them and t taking their pictures, promising that she'll send them all the best ones later. We all clean up and help put away the tea sets and tables then head out as Daisy and Carmen Sita fall asleep on their dad's shoulder. Take care, guys. Thanks for coming. Bye, Hacker Princess. You want dinner? Nah, I filled up on cookies. <laughs> Me too, I'm tired. Dude, same. Playing with a bunch of little kids who simultaneously want your attention and approval is surprisingly exhausting. But in a good way, but also in kind of a scary way? How so? I feel like I gotta be on my best behavior for them. I don't want them, I don't wanna let them down. Is this because you still feel bad about dropping the F-bomb in front of your cousin that one time? I corrupted her dad. She secondhand smokes now. I secondhand smoke all the time. What the fuck? Well, those kids really look up to you, and I'm glad they have you as a role model. Shucks, Pops. I ruffle Amanda's hair. That's so cute.
Hi, Craig. Ever since the first time we hung out, I've been trying. I've been getting up a little early for runs. I don't think I'm gonna be as embarrassing as last time. Maybe I'll even be able to catch up to him now. I'll type out a message to him on Dad Book. Hey man, been training on my run game recently. Ready for round two? Of course. Enjoy emojis. What? <laughs> what? Oh, I don't know why he didn't just send an emoji rather than typing it out. Another message pet pops in my inbox from Craig. Let's meet up tomorrow morning for my favorite morning activity. Brunch. Oh my god, I type back. Brunch, what's that? You get it. You run and then you get brunch. Oh, right. Oh my God. Craig and I agree to a time and meet up in the morning and I have a chance to spend the evening hanging out with Amanda. So are we doing pizza tonight? Again, can't we do like a salad night? Dad, are you on a health kick? I, not yet. I formed a community or a committee to examine the possibility of being on a health kick. They haven't returned with their findings. Dad, if you go on a health kick, then I have to go on a health kick by virtue of being under the same roof as you. I don't know if I have the constitution for that. The committee, the committee isn't back with its findings yet. This is still a multi-year assessment on several bureaucratic levels. <laughs> well, Amanda picks up the phone and stares at me, unblinking as she dials. Hi, yes, can I get an extra large pizza with chicken, bacon, extra cheese, and tomatoes, and a couple of garlic sauce cups? And uh, you're going a little north there. Oh, right. Can you maybe throw in some leaves on there or something? Yeah, he's going on a health click. Yeah, Rico. I know. It's tragic. <laughs> what? Hold on. I'll ask. Dad, is oregano a salad? It is not a salad. Can't blame me for trying. Nah, Rico. I'm talking to dad. We'll just go with a meat lover's fantasy. Sure. Say hi to the wife and kids for me. Amanda hangs up. Rico says, hey. Food gets delivered and we plop down on the couch and eat some za. Just be careful. Running is a gateway drug. It's a slippery slope, Dad. First, you go on a couple light jogs, and before you know it, you're converting the garage into a home gym and renewing your subscription to some sort of weekly kombucha delivery service. Question Shoot. What's kombucha? God, seriously, it's like my father is Astroth. Like, I, like he's so spacey. So you aren't too work on yet. I'm just giving you a hard time, Pops. I'm really happy you're running more and caring about your health. I want you to keep you around for as long as possible. Thanks, kiddo. Speaking of which, I'm running with Craig tomorrow. You going to be able to keep up with him? Hey, probably not. <laughs> we laugh and eat more pizza than, probably, than is probably healthy in the name of carb loading. I call it a night early, so I'm ready for tomorrow. First when I start running in the morning, it was pretty hellish. Now that I'm a few sessions in, it immediately has become a little bit easier, despite it always ending in me dry heaving over a trash can. <laughs> is that what the runner's high is? Just dry heaving? I lace up my tennis shoes, throw on a t-shirt from a rider summit I went to 20 years ago, and head out to the door at a moderate jog. Craig is already outside with a river strapped to his chest. He's dressed head to toe in color-coordinated running gear. Wow, I look like a total schlump next to this guy. Hey, bro. Morning, Craig. River's going to be running with us. Best as she can. We're taking it to the limit, aren't we, kiddo? Goo. Oh, I know what that means. Craig hands her her stuffed toy, which makes her smile ear to ear. That's Arnold the Capybara. Sometimes it's the only thing that'll get her to stop crying. Oh, I've been there. Amanda had a stuffed panda that she carried around with her everywhere. She would have she would have had a tantrum if we tried to wash it. It was gross. So you've been running lately? Every morning for 30 minutes, I'm basically an elite athlete at this point. Well, I'll try to keep up. So where are we headed? I was thinking that we could do a couple laps around the park. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Then we'll do some hill climbing up a slope. Uh, okay, I can probably handle that. Then we'll close it off by doing some wilderness survival, like hiking, running to increase our agility. I'm suddenly struck with the overwhelming need to crawl back into bed. Honestly, fair. That sounds okay to you. I usually like to throw in some timed murder sprints in there, but I'll go easy on you since you're a beginner. That sounds like something I am able to physically do. Great. Let's get started. Fuck, I'm screaming. Craig and I finally arrive at the park. A few other 
lone joggers make their way around the perimeter and river waves enthusiastically at everyone as we pass it's a, it's a lot more peaceful in the mornings aside from birds chirping and river gurgling away in the stroller it's pretty quiet all right good warm-up that was the warm-up oh bro i'm not even i'm not physically running but i'm already out of breath like is that bad like <laughs> I'm not physically working out, but I am out of breath. But wait, Craig reaches into his bag and tosses me a water bottle. I fumble it, but thankfully don't drop it. You gotta hydrate, bro. I take a long drink from the water bottle and feel re reinvigorated. Man, I don't drink enough water. Hey, I look down and pick up Arnold, reverse toy, and hand it back to her. Must have dropped this. Thanks for looking out, bro. You ready? Yeah, let's go. Fuck. We finally finished our however many teenth lap around the park. I'm breathing heavily, but I can't believe I actually didn't lose Craig. He's even breathing heavily too, which makes me feel a little better. I look down on my shirt and notice that I'm drenched in sweat. Huh. Almost looks like a frowny face. <laughs> that one? What? I'm just kidding. Good hustle out there. I'm really impressed. You're way better than the last time I launched you off the treadmill. Yeah, man, you really pushed me to my limit just now. I can't believe I held on. Sometimes you just need someone there to push you to do your absolute best. I'm glad I can be that guy. <gasps> oh my god. I'm like Oh hi wife. What's up? <laughs> it's fine. I'm not I'm totally not falling for Craig. No. Mm -mm. Who's ready for hill climbs? Blap. There's my little cheerleader. Aaron, you ready? <laughs> you bet. Craig takes me to a separate portion of the park where there's a steep hill that seems to go up forever. I strain my eyes to see some other joggers at the top. So what do we do now? We run up that thing. That looks like a lot. Aaron, there's two things you need to know about that hill. One, don't stop running until you get to the top. And two, Craig points to the top of the hill. That's not the top. Let's do this. <laughs> I finally reached the top of the hill after making my way past what I originally thought was the top of the hill. Once there, I hunch over to my knees and gasp for air. My lungs are like daggers poking my ribs. I can feel my heart in my ears. River, I'm having a moment, please. <laughs> I like the I love life. Oh boy, Craig's looks like he's taking a beating as well. So he is human. Aaron, put your arms in your head and stretch out your elbows. It'll help you breathe better. What? Like this? Listen. Okay, wife, I have to catch you up. Okay, you ready? Are you ready for this hot goss? You ready for this? Are you, do you, do you want me to catch you up? Because there's some juicy deets. I'm just saying. Okay. Craig and I played softball for like a little bit, right? And he, I accidentally caught the ball with my face. I fell to the ground and he kissed me on the forehead. So. And then I went on a date with Hugo. Hugo apparently likes wrestling and trivia and literature and charcuterie boards. Okay. I don't know if Hugo is my guy, dude. I think Craig is my guy. I think he's, so, I think Craig is so cute. I love how invested he is in his kids. I think it's so adorable that he coaches softball. I think it's so adorable that he runs with his fucking child river. I think it's so cute. I just think it's so cute. Like, he's so determined about, like, himself and, like, helping his kids. I don't know. I just, I love that. I think it's really adorable. I do as Craig says. It feels a little better, but I'm still in agony. And here, Craig tosses me a water bottle again. I hydrate like my life depends on it. 
Thanks, dude. Phenomenal work. You'll feel that lightness in your head. That's the runner's high. Oh, that's it. I thought it was just, you know, dying. You want to take it slow for a bit? I would like that very much. As we're catching our breath, River starts crying. No. Like, how cute is this? Craig looks around us. Oh, boy. Man down. I think we lost Arnold. River keeps wailing. I've abandoned my child. My, my child's toy. Gotta find him, dude. It should be simple, right? We just gotta retrace our steps. I remember River last having it down at the bottom of the hill. Craig and I jog down the path, searching high and low for the stuffed capybara, which Craig takes his time to explain to me is a large rodent native to South America. We get to the place where River might have dropped, but it's dropped it, but it's still nowhere to be found. Looks like we've got a misty on our hands. We've got to get to the bottom of this. I suspect foul's play. Looks like this is a prime case of world-renowned Detective Angela. Dude, it's time for a bro venture. <gasps> a bro venture! Oh my god, I literally said bro venture without even meaning to say bro venture. It's a bro adventure. It's a bro venture. We high five and decide to jog back to the park to see if we can find any leads. So it looks like there's a couple more places to check and some bros around here that we can interrogate. Sounds good. Wait, who's good cop and who's bad cop? I think about it for a second. Well, I think that with your stature and overall resilience, you would make an intimidating bad cop. But on the other hand, you do have an adorable baby strapped to your chest so that softens the edge of it. All valid points. I think you would make a good, a great good cop because of your congenial attitude and willingness to try new things. <gasps> oh my God, he gave us a compliment. I could cry. I'm going to cry. But then again, I've seen how you get when there's too many commercial breaks during a show. So you have the potential to be a scary bad cop. I don't want to have to... Watch Meat Hell in three minute segments with five minutes of commercials in between. Bro, I get it. I feel you. And they're loud. The commercials are so loud. I just want to watch my show in peace without people yelling at me to buy wiper fluid and stuff. Accurate. I'm just saying that's accurate, dude. You're just like just like you're watching like a very like peaceful, nice stream, and then fucking Twitch ads come up and it's like would you like to rah, 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 rah? and i'm like bro can you shut the fuck up like i totally just blew out eardrums i'm so sorry I feel, actually feel really bad. I'm actually really sorry. I was just trying to make a point. Oh my God. Case in point. Let's play it moment by moment. Smart. So, where to protective? <laughs> so cute. To the playground. We all make our way to the small playground at the edge of the park. A couple of kids play on the jungle gym while parents watch on a nearby benches over on one of the what what whoa whoa run on sentence watch on a nearby bench over on one of those benches i spot a s familiar face Let's see what joseph's up to jog over to jo oh seems to be engrossed in his book joseph joseph nearly drops his book hey guys didn't think i'd see you two here aaron are you exercising Sure am. You know me. I just love to run and be healthy. That's my kind of whole thing. <laughs> what are you reading? Oh, just a book on knots and rope tying. sounds sus that's what it sounds like it sounds sus for boats boat ropes right <laughs> say you didn't happen to see a stuffed capybara around it's a capybara it's a large rodent that's native to south america joseph thanks for a second hmm haven't seen one around tell the kids to keep an eye out 
Are your kids here? Joseph looks around. They were here a second ago. Must have gone exploring around the park. Do you know where they could have run off to? Her kids, they get into mischief sometimes, but they always come back. Thanks, Joseph. Uh, we'll let you get back to your rope book. Boat ropes. Ah. Craig and I, two grown adults, walk into, onto the playground and begin examining it meticulously for clues. No forensic evidence here. No street happy barrier hairs, at least. After searching fruit, fruitlessly for some time, we look up. All the parents are staring at us. We smile and wave as we awkwardly slink away. Ooh. Maybe might as well get a couple swings in. What about Arnold? Maybe having a little swing might calm River down, might buy us some more time. You're right. She's about to go nuclear. <gasps> she has gave us hearts. This might prepare her for the possibility of us not being able to find Arnold. Life is cruel and tough, but at least we'll always have swings. You know what? That's accurate. I love swinging. Craig straps River into the baby swing and gives her a gentle push. She giggles. Oh, that's so cute. I take the seat on the swing next to her and immediately realize that I'm stuck. St stuck River. Oh that, oh, that I'm stuck. Fuck, I did not see the period there. S River seems to love that. Craig eventually helps me out of the swing and we decide to get back to the investigation. All right, let's move around to the park. Let's go to the woods. We make our way to the outskirts of the park. There's a couple of benches out. Our benches by the dense tree line. Looks like Robert's here all by himself. That also seems like the perfect place to look for clues. Craig and I search through the outskirts of the woods, hoping to find anything that might lead us to Arnold. There are a couple of cigarettes and empty beer cans scattered around the thicket. This is probably the hot spot for edgy teens to hang out at night and say swears and stuff. But it doesn't look like there was any recent activity that might be capybara related. This might be a dead end, partner bro. Robert might have saw something. We walk over to Robert's bench. Hey, Rob. Don't call me that. Oof. Hi, Robert. Don't call me that either. Uh, okay. Hey, buddy. What are you up to? Thinking. This is my thinking bench. I have to get two sol. I have to get two to three solid hours of brooding in per day, fulfilling quotas. Have you by any chance seen a stuffed capybara around? A capybara is a larger. I know. So have you seen one? A stuffed one, not a real one. That would be weird. Hmm. Come on, Robert. The sooner you tell us what we what you know, the sooner we can let you get back to brooding. Bad cop time, Robert. If you if you don't help us, I'm gonna put you in a headlock. Is that a threat or a promise? Oh, slow down. Bro, I think him and Joseph should have a chat. Ooh, this guy's weird. I don't like this Robert guys. <laughs> He's too full on, bro. He's too full on. I don't know. Maybe I'm just, I don't know. Back off. Oof. I have dad deduced where we should go next. We wander out to the grassy field at the center of the park. There isn't a whole lot to see, but there are a few figures camped out on a blanket, and the grass could hold any number of secrets. Matt and Carmencita. Let's talk to Matt and his daughter. Carmencita spots us across the way and waves. She's sitting down with her dad on a sunny green patch of grass we jog over. Hey, dudes. Hey, bro. We just sat down for a picnic. Want some snacks? Got anything to increase my glucosin reserves? Uh, we have apple slices. Thank you very much, tiny bro, but I should be fine. You guys working out? Good day for it. Yep, I'm the picture of health and athleticism. <laughs> Good transition, Aaron. Say, you haven't seen a stuffed capybara around here anywhere, have you? What's a capybara? Oh, God, it's a large bird that's native to South America. Wait a second, how do you know what a capybara is? You wouldn't happen to have had hands-on experience with one recently would you learn about happy bears in the fourth grade i think it's more suspicious that you know what a capybara is oh 
my god what if i took arnold what if i'm the culprit and i just don't remember her i quickly check my body for any polaroids i might have kept on my person to remind me of who to trust and who not to trust <laughs> i saw memento once and i'm pretty sure that's how it worked <laughs> nothing but what if that's what i wanted myself to think no eric don't let them win shake it off them i saw a couple of squirrels over by the tree though i don't know if that helps but if you want to see some cute squirrels you should definitely check it out thanks for the hot squirrel tip carmen Zita. well we better get moving gotta find that capybara before river has a breakdown good luck we get some apples for the road though Carmencita hooks me up with some road apple slices we're on the way. That's so funny. We maneuver back over to the field. Yeah, check out the squirrels. Mm, let's go tree. Ah, there they are. Carmencita was telling the truth. There's some sad, there's some rad squirrels. River seems happy. This may have brought us some extra time. We maneuver back to the field. Wait, let me try this. It's always the culprit you least expect. I got eye to eye with River, who still looks like she's on the verge of tears. Hey, sweetie, believe me, no one wants no one wants you to find your capybara more than me. But we need to find more clues. And I think somewhere in that baby brain of yours, you might have something that'll lead us to the perp. What do you say? That's actually really cute. Blech. That's you, Brie. <laughs> I turned to Craig getting nowhere with the witness <laughs> i jog over craig is kneeling in the grass inspecting something i approach my heart is in my throat as i lean over craig i see it this is arnold's leg put my hand over river's eyes no one should be subjected to this senseless violence oh my god who or what would do this i don't know but now i think we might be dealing with something beyond our grasp I can't look at this anymore. I turn around trying to wipe the image of stuffing strewn across the ground from my mind. We're running out of time. We might be too late. Bag and tag it. Let's get moving. We maneuver back to the field. <laughs> Clock sticking, dude. What are we going to do next? I don't know if we should. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go back to the woods. Be a bad cop. Robert, I'm going to keep you from vaguely threatening. I'm going to keep being vaguely threatening until you tell us something useful. I told you, I haven't seen that capybara. What is, what are you guys' damage? Damn again. <laughs> I'm going to go to the park. Her tiny eyes betray a barely conscious broiling rage just beneath the surface or something. She's a baby. I don't know. Let's move. Uh, playground. Uh, try to calm River down. Fuck. Uh, we jog over to Joseph. Okay. Joseph, do you happen to know where Christian and Christy have gone? Her kids, they're getting into mischief sometimes. Uh, okay. Sounds a little suspect. Mischief, you say. Wait, am I being interrogated right now? What are you hiding, Joseph? Blah. Kind of getting the third degree here. This is serious. There's a capybara on the line. I mean, you're more than welcome to ask Kristen, Christian and Christy. I imagine they have their ears to the ground on all the latest playground drama. They might be somewhere in the woods. Thanks, Joseph. We'll let you get back to your rope. Get back, get back to your ropes. No. Damn it. Damn it, bro, I fucked up. Crack open the door to find her still in bed, sleepingly scrolling through her phone. Morning. Afternoon, actually. Right, how was brunch? Well, we had a good time with the run part, but we didn't make it to the rest of the port man to port port man to port man to Huh? To brunch. We didn't make it to brunch. Somehow we lost River's toy, Cappy Bear on our run. Cappy Bear is, Dad, don't patronize me about giant rodents. I know. Sorry. Anyway, we figured out that Joseph's creepy twins had something to do with it, but we never got to the bottom of it. Well, the run went well, though. I was a little worried about your endurance. Yeah, it was a little rough at first, but ended up being quite a piece of cake. I actually feel pretty gr- My legs give out. I find myself on the floor in the hallway. <gasps> no! 
that's always the worst i'm gonna hang out here for a while you take your time getting up oh my god that's so funny no i'm so upset i really wanted river to have his have her capybara fuck damn it Fucking suck at this. It's a beautiful night and the air smells so fresh, so I decided to take the long way home. I casually stroll through the neighborhood, taking in the sights and sounds of a suburban city with a low crime rate and wide walkable sidewalks at night. As I approach the bar, I can hear patrons inside cheering. Oh, I bet the game is on. I wonder if my team is playing tonight. A drop of water hits my head, and now it's lots of drops of water. It's pouring rain. Maybe I should wait this out inside. I order a beer from the bar and settle in. It turns out that my team isn't playing tonight, but I can certainly enjoy the game regardless. Bar is unusually crowded, and the feeling of camaraderie over a shared love of the over the game makes me smile. Sports are nice. Oh my god, this bitch again. Fuck, bro, go away. I look over into the corner and spot none other than Mary sitting alone and in the corner nursing a cocktail. Something about her seems different this time. Now that she's by herself and not hanging off some younger guy, she looks so sad. She looks up and half-heartedly raises her glass to me before staring off into the middle distance. I decide to go say hello. I walk over to her booth. She doesn't look up. The seat taken? She still doesn't look up. I take the seat anyway, and she finally notices me. Hey, cowboy. You all right? Never better. She hiccups. Guess she's a little far gone. Tar tears start welling up in her eyes. Oh. I, well, will you walk a gal home? I guess I'll walk around. I saw out of the booth. It seems like Mary's having some trouble getting up. I reach out a hand to help her, but she waves me away. I got it. I got it. She clearly does not got it. You know what? Hang in there for a second. I walk over to the bartender and pay Mary's tab. Hey, I don't know if you remember me, but I live in Mary's cul-de-sac, and I'm just making sure she gets home safely tonight. I know you. Yeah, it's nothing weird. Just She usually has one of the bar staff bar go home, but I trust you. She doesn't, like, go home with? I don't really want to say it. One of the guys she meets? Nah. Nah? Ain't her thing. Huh? I head back to the booth. Mary stumbles out of the seat and directly into my arms. It's still raining a bit. I take off my coat and hold it over Mary's head. Such a gentleman. Let's get you home. Mary and I walk in silence up the street towards the cul-de-sac. I have no idea what to say to her for fear that she might hit on me or not. What did the barson bartender mean by ain't her thing? Sorry you have to see me like this. I'm usually not. I know Joseph doesn't like it when I... Just sorry. It's all right. I'm sorry if I'm ever mean to you. It's all right. No, it's not. I know it's not. I'm just... I'm having a really... Forget it. As we get to the cul-de-sac, I can feel Mary starting to slow down. By the time we arrive at the doorstep, she pulls away from me. Wait, can we just... Hold on. What's wrong? How about another drink, old time's sake? Come on, Mary, it's bedtime. Mary looks me up and down, giving me a half smile. You're right. She pulls me in close for a hug, holding me a, for a little longer than feels appropriate. She mumbles into my chest. You're a good kid. Thanks for the company. Mary gives me a pat on the back, straightens out her sweater, and walks the rest of the way to her front door herself. Huh? What is this? This is Steven from D Dadmazon. I'm out front with your delivery. Oh, yes, I'll be right down. Wait, no, sorry, I need to put pants on first. I can't find my pants, but, I, but I'm wrapped from waist down in a duvet. Are you cool with that? I can come back tomorrow. No, 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 put pants on an idiot put fucking pants on oh i got a package i wonder what it is oh i bet it's a package of socks i ordered i open up the box start pulling the package peanuts out man these socks reek okay that's definitely not socks it's 
Butterflies? Oh boy. I almost don't even want to know what Amanda was planning on doing with these. Amanda, your box of dead butterflies is here. What's up? Are you sacrificing them? What? You ordered butterflies? You can order butterflies online? Wait, so these aren't yours? Uh, no, but I'm definitely ordering some right now. Um, okay, love you. I take a look at the box again. Oh, this is addressed to Damien's house. Got it. I should take it over to him. Nice fucking house, dude. I should go over to Damien's house with the box. I pull back his door knockers, but suddenly the door opens. Bro, you're gonna need to put some WD-40 on that shit because that shit is squeaky. Mr. Angelo, to what do I owe the pleasure? Oh, how did you know that I was about to knock? Uh, I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, I think uh, this got delivered to my house by mistake. I handed him the box and his face lights up. What a wonderful surprise. I was just about to send a strongly worded letter to the courier service about this. Many thanks. Because it because if if you want to put them in like a shadow box, Marvel, a, a lot of people do that. Uh, not to pry, but what do you do with those butterflies? Would you like to see? Alarm bells ring in my head. This is how you die, Aaron Angela. Yeah, sure. Damien leads me into a study where he sets up some sort of workstation. Above his desk is a wall of pin butterflies, moss, and beetles. Oh wow, that's really something, Damien. I'm a I'm quite proud of my little collection. You do all this yourself? Of course. How do you... It's simple. Here, let me show you. These aren't really quite ready yet. They'll have to be rehydrated overnight so they're easier to work with. I have some over here that are ready to pin. Damien takes a seat at his desk while I hover behind him. He picks up a little triangular paper package and snips off the edges. He pulls out an all-black butterfly and shows it to me. I'm rather excited about this. It's a tortoise swallowtail. He gently opens the wings, spreading the butterfly out on the table. The back of the wings are gorgeous iridescent green color. Oh, the pigment on this one is nice too. Anyways, pinning a butterfly is actually very simple. It just requires delicate touch. First, I'll put a pin through the thorax. Damien slides a pin through the middle of the butterfly and places the butterfly on a piece of styrofoam. He carefully arranges the antennae with forceps and begins placing paper and more pins on it and around it. He does this so effortlessly that it's almost hypnotic. I have a frame here that I think this one will look quite pretty in, it, but I'll need to let it sit for a couple of days until it's ready. And then what? I remove all the pins and put it on display with the others. I take a closer look at Damon's collection. One of the bright blue wings keeps drawing my eye. This one's so pretty. Damien takes it off of the wall. Ah, yes, that's a blue morpho, one of my favorites too. He hands a small frame to me. Here, I think this would look lovely in your home. Oh, I, I, I couldn't take this. I insist, believe me. I have more than enough. Thank you. If you ever have an interest in pinning some insects yourself, you know where to find me. Ha, I think I'll leave that up to you. I feel like I'd probably break them in half with my butter fingers. Nonsense, you have beautiful study hands. You would make a fine taxidermist. <gasps> he complimented my hands, you guys. Ooh! You're right, I do have nice hands. <sighs> I moisturize them, like, every day. Am I blushing? Yes! Damien walks me to the door and gives me a smile, a warm smile as I leave. Do take care of yourself, Aaron. Thanks for allowing me to share my odd little... <gasps> Oh my god, fine, I'll go to the stupid fucking art thing with you. Yes. Jesus. Invited me to the monthly art walk in downtown Maple Bay. I have never really been to one of these before, so I'm not quite sure what I'm in for. I think I'm a bit early. I don't see Damien or Hugo around, I f and I feel just a little uncomfortable standing amongst all these fancy art people. Aaron? I turn around, it's Joseph. Oh fuck, I hate this guy. Joseph, what are you doing here? Joseph scoffs at me. What am I doing here? How could you ask me that? I'm obviously a huge art, huge art uh, appreciate, uh, appreciator, uh, appreciatist. Okay, fine, Damien invited me to this art walk thing. I'm guessing he invited you too. Yep. 
immediately a little out of my depth here. Thank God. I thought I was the only going to be the only odd one out. I'm not allowed to say that. Say what? You know, thank God. Yep. I actually get double points when I say it since I'm a minister. What? The point, the points get you into heaven. That's how it works. Anyways, where are the guys? I look and spot Hugo and Damien who seem to have just arrived at the gallery. Good eve, good eve, good eve. Evening, friends. Who's ready for some art? I have no idea what I'm in for. Um, same. All you have to do is... All I have to do... All you have to know is that if you're ever feeling overwhelmed, there's generally always a table that has free wine and cheese. I like art now. <laughs> I've got the, the table in my sights. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go help myself to some tiny wines. Talk art with Hugo and Damien. So what's this first place? This particular artist specializes in landscape painting of various locales within the American Northwest. Hmm. I look at the art. It's rad art. At the risk of sounding uninformed, do all these landscapes look like butts to you guys? Damien and Hugo lean in, examining the paintings in earnest. It would appear as if you're correct. Valid assessment, Aaron. Hey, this art stuff's pretty easy. Oh, it gets more complicated. Sometimes the butts are more symbolic. Sometimes the butts are metaphors. Sometimes art is about the butts they don't draw. Huh, interesting. Joseph returns to, your, to your, our group with tiny cheese and wine. What'd I miss? Butts. Shame. The cheese is nice, though. <laughs> Shall we visit the next place? Hold on two seconds, you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna be right back. All right, we back. Why? Why would you? Why would you do that to me? Why 
Why would you do this? Why would you do this to me? Why would you do this to me? Okay, maybe, um, I go through this fucking art museum, maybe. Leave the first art gallery and, oh, fuck. Whoops. Something about we leave the first art gallery and blah, 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 blah. Okay. What am I looking at here? This is abstract art. I think the more important question is, what does this art mean to you? I stare at the painting, concentrating as hard as I can on its meaning. It's a metaphor for the human condition. It's actually really powerful, Aaron. Karen, to expound on it? With pleasure. Oh, my God. I don't know anything about art. These vivid, simple forms communicate a soul. I don't know what this word is. That is betrayed by the raw expressiveness of the brushwork, which, in a way, speaks to the essential nature of human experience. The scars left by the passage of time and the turmoil of contemporary life are both contextualized and deepened by the rose-colored echoes of the pre consciousness. Slow down there, Aaron. Can you do us a favor? Keep it simple. It's a butt. Everyone else stares at the painting. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely a butt. I, uh, hmm. While a valid assessment, I can't help feeling your initial judgment may be closer to the artist's intentions. Maybe you're underestimating how much the artists like butts. You are a servant of the Lord. We're all God's creatures, even butts. Listen, butts are nice. Bearing this piece to the artist's body of work, I'm pretty sure this represents the sense of isolation he feels creating traditional abstract artwork in the field that rapidly moving towards digitation. Ah, how'd you figure that? That's what it says on the placard. Oh. That's literally what I would <laughs> That's literally what I would say too. I'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> Let's look at a few more. We rock around the gallery, sampling some more of the artist's work. I almost hate to say it, but abstract art is kind of growing on me. It's definitely interesting that the artist chooses not to let their work be defined by what's that word? Realism? Realism. As we're looking at one of the paintings, a patron scoffs like push i could do that excuse me hugo not here no come back here patron walks by not noticing hugo fumed right next to him you could say that you could do that but you didn't you didn't seem to have the intellectual depth of or the artistic skill to execute a piece even a fraction as impressive as this one art is the oh Art is the truest expression of the self, and it seems like yourself is bad, so your art would be bad. <gasps> Oof. Go off, Hugo. Go off. Go off. Bro. Hugo's insult game isn't the best, but there's no denying his passion. Damien is holding him back at this point. Friend, friend, friend. Does that work? Hugo manages to cool down. He smooths his jacket. I'm sorry, I just love art very much. You know, buddy. I pat Hugo on the shoulders. You know what would ease the mood? Is it cheese? No. It's wine and cheese. Co-signed. The four of us head over to the wine and cheese table, which thankfully is grounded in realism and is actually wine and cheese. We at least got one last stop on the tour. You lot feeling up for it? Is it going to be any weirder than this art? It is absolutely weirder than this art. Let's do it. Bro, please don't be bugs. Damien, Hugo, Joseph, and I walk over to the performance in the street. Several mass performers in the in leotards un, undulate. Is that how you spell undulate? Why is there a D? Why, why is this not a G? So then it should be und undulate. It's undulate. It sounds like undulate. That's what it sounds like.
undulate with a D, as in dog, not G. Undulate. No, I thought it was undulate. What the fuck is undulate? How do you spell undulate then? Like you're undulating. Like. <sighs> Wait, have I been saying? That's not a word? Well, then why has everyone been telling me it's undulate and not undulate? No, it's not. It's not. Even Mr. Fathead says it's not. And he's sitting here and he's fucking hanging out with us. Bro, Mr. Fathead is so cute. I'm so glad I, ha I took him. I, I, I didn't take him. I'm so glad I got him in Korea. He's so cute. It's a softie. Unulate. So it's so so that it's just unulate. This is what I don't understand about English. No. Okay. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> English. I refuse. That's it. That's all I'm saying right now. I have been stuttering all night, ma'am. I can't. I refuse. Mr. Fathead says that he refuses too. Mr. Fathead says he refuses. And yes, I have named this cute little stuffed animal thing Mr. Fathead because he literally has a fat head. It's really cute. I love him. <laughs> How are you not what? An English teacher? I know. Like, I am. I am just like the smartest. He's wrong, but valid. <gasps> Don't listen as I'm literally covering his ears. I don't even know where the fuck his ear holes are, but I'm, I, you know, <laughs> you know, when you're like, <laughs> you know, in like movies where, um, where like kids like hear something like absurd and, and like the parents like cover the ears and they're like, <gasps> don't listen. She's wrong. She's crazy. Okay, I'm gonna play an ad so that it doesn't cut out um with content. So we'll be back. We'll be back. How do I like force an ad? I'm gonna be honest. There we go. Um I Mr. Fathead is not wrong. He is correct. Ma'am. Thank you. I literally can't stop wanting. And go tell it to say un unulate. Okay, all right, fuck it. All right, bet, bitch. Undulate. <gasps> Undulate. Unj Undulate. 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 <laughs> but it sounds like a G. It's a G sound. It's not a D sound. It's a G sound. I'm just saying. Undulate. It's a G sound. Look at me fighting with chat about fucking English. And I didn't even fucking major in English. <laughs> I hate English so much. 
Why do I literally see that fucking thing in my head? Like, <laughs> it's okay, Mr. Fat Hen. Brie is also wrong on a lot of things, and you are swimming in the sea of right today, and that's okay. <laughs> Kisses right to baby. <laughs> what the fuck? Yo, that kid, that fucking parent is probably like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Baby starts crying. Oh my god, mom. <laughs> so quick question. Shoot. What is happening? I second this question. Performance art. What does that mean? Again, I propose the very same question to you, Mr. Angelo. They're like screaming. Is it butts? What do you think they're trying to say? I believe it's less about what they're tr they're saying and more about why they're saying it. I think there's something special about performance art. With almost every other form of art, music, painting, photography, the artist uses their medium as a conduit for their emotions. With performance art, the medium is the artist. It is the purest expression of raw human emotion. It's the it's art as catharsis. <gasps> Walaikum salam, lemon. Inshallah, you're doing well. Also, good morning. Hello. That's beautiful, Damon. So, what you're saying is. If I start making really loud fart noises right now, it's art as long as I, like, really mean it. Damien fixes him with a hard stare. I was going to start making fart noises, but based on the look on her face, that joke isn't going to play well with this crowd. <gasps> Good morning, Lemon! It's also, like, almost 10 o'clock here. So, like, I am also wide awake, and so I don't know if you're willing to have a, a person yell at you right now. <gasps> Wise. We watch the rest of the performance as earnestly as we can and clap politely after the dancers scream their way off stage. Phew, I think I'm all arted out. Agreed. We all decided to walk home together. We make our way back to the cul-de-sac, tiny wine and tiny cheese sloshing around in my stomach. I think what I've learned tonight, and not just what I've learned about art, which was nice and extremely informative, but what I've learned tonight is that when you put a bunch of tiny wine and tiny cheese together... It eventually becomes regular wine and regular cheese, followed by too much wine and too much cheese. Tiny cheese lulled me. No, Bree, we are not doing this. We are not roping lemon into how we say this stupid word. He just woke up. Let the man wake up. He's probably gotta, he's probably gotta make wudu and pray fudger and all that stuff. Probably, we're probably looking at least like 15, 20 minutes before Lemon probably responds. Tiny cheese lulled me into a false sense of security. I felt safe with the tiny cheese. <laughs> Wax wings too close to the sun. <laughs> Wax wings. Those would melt in the sun too, and I feel like it's more appropriate imagery. It's innocent, unrelated. It's totally related. It's, like, totally related. Plus, it'd be delicious. A nice... What? What? A menthaler? A menthaler. And... In, 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 it sounds it, it sounds like uh, how would i describe how i paired out honestly accurate hey if you guys were painters what would you guys paint i actually dabble in oils i mostly paint in landscapes i'm not very good but it's a nice way to pass the time i think i would focus on personal portraits of people in unique professions like for example luchadors luchadors Jesus. I think I'd paint boats, seascapes, maybe lighthouses, mostly boats. This guy's obsessed with boats. Really? Yeah, I'm surprised you're choosing boats in favor of long history of religious imagery of art in artwork. 
What? Boats are cool. What about you, Aaron? <laughs> uh, my body, my body is telling me yes. I really want to fucking click this so bad. It's like a giant red button. I just want to click it. I just want to click it. No, artist food dream. We gotta be, you know, we gotta be tasteful. Maybe tasteful. I'd probably do still lifes of various food, bowls of fruit, maybe some bread in there. Would there be cheese involved? See, I thought about that. And no, I can't stare at a pyro cheese for eight hours without eating some of it. That would ruin the whole thing. Excellent point. We finally get to the cul-de-sac. All right, boys, good art. Good art. Great. See you guys around. Whether you want to or not, we're all neighbors after all. I head inside to deal with my inevitable cheese over. That's funny. Mm? Hi, Craig. What about Damien? Should we go on a date with Damien? A little odd, but interesting. I think I should hang out with him to get to know him a little bit better. I navigate to Damien's dad book page and type out a message. Hey, dude, you seem really cool. We should hang out sometime. Sit there for a minute before I see that Damien typing, but then he keeps typing and typing. Man, is this guy writing a novel? I'll, I'll leave the computer to make some coffee. And he's still typing. I sit my coffee and the computer finally dings. Aaron, I must confess. I must confess my excitement to be receiving your kind letter for, as you see, I do find myself available to enjoy your company. I must ask for your forgiveness, however, as I believe our first meeting did not paint me in a gen gentlemanly manner as I would have liked. I would be highly flattered to enjoy your com Jesus. Breed, are you Damien right now? Damien is, um, oh my God, my brain is spacing right now. Damien is Oriange. Damien is Oriange. Unjuli. Yeah, see, but place the J at the end of the un. So more like unju. Unju. Like, see? Get fucked. Bree. I would be highly flattered to enjoy. Yeah. But that's but that's how I was taught to pronounce it. What? Are you... Mr. Fathead, tell Brie that she's crazy. <laughs> would be highly I would be highly flattered to enjoy your companionship at my residence for an afternoon tea and a stroll around my garden. Should it please you, till then, adieu, you're humbled. Oh, my God. Hey, Amanda. Can you help me with something? Dad, for the last time, I'm not popping your back pimples. No, no, no. Can you, like, interpret this for me? Turn the computer to Amanda, and she squints at Damien's message. I just don't understand net speak. Like, is this how you kids communicate with each other? Oh, totally. This is ha the hot new thing. See, Dad, kids get over saying LOL and LMAO and whatever they just and whatever and decided that what they needed to do was bring it all back to the 1800s. So what do I do? Where's your pen and quill? <laughs> oh, my God. 
well brie maybe you should have fucking came to my school and taught the english teachers how to fucking teach english did you forget to unpack your pen and quill dad how will we address the the nobleman in regards to your upcoming debut Deb oh debut debutante ball Okay, now I know you're messing with me. Father, without a proper chaperone, you will never end up with a suitor worthy of our land. Or our dowry. Or... So you read Pride and Prejudice for school one time and now you're reciting things you... <laughs> like, the first five pages and then I read a view of the movie. Still gotta be, though. Nice. Great. So what do I say to Damien? I got this. Amanda reaches over me and types on the keyboard. Sure thing, dude. Regards, Aaron. Made a hit send and smiles back at me. Well, I suppose that's that. Yeah. Exactly, Lemon. Exactly. So, Brie was like, it's a soft D, and I was like, Okay, then technically it's unulate then. If you're saying it's okay, if you're saying it's a soft D, then it's unulate. Hi, witty. <laughs> no one likes a no one likes a soft D, Brie. We all know this. No one likes a soft D. Let's be. I mean, doesn't everyone pronounce soft letters like what you don't pronounce silent letters sometimes like knife <laughs> google says undulate <laughs> um witty we are having a conversation about how you properly say undulate. Bree thinks it's undulate, undulate, undo, do, like D E W late. Okay. Undo. <laughs> Singa, singing. <laughs> How do you know? You don't know my life? <laughs> oh my God. Brie, I'm so sorry. I did not know this was like a contention for you. I feel really bad. <laughs> you know what? What? You're right. No, I'm not. You say words how you know. I love you so much. The fact that you care so much about how I say this word is really cute. It's freaking adorable and I love you so much. You should say it as un undulate. 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 Wait, Lemon, do you say undulate or undulate? Oh my god, it was definitely my worst subject, Lemon, but you know what? I made up for it with, like, my amazing papers. Grammar, atrocious. Content, amazing. Spelling, atrocious. Um, Brie is just being a Brie. It's okay. You know what? And that's okay. Yeah, undulate. Yeah, undulate. I am a Brie. And you are the best Brie. You are the best. You are best. You are the best Brie. Oh my god, should we stop at Damien's house? I feel like we should stop at Damien's house. Okay, I'll be back. Bye. I'll make the I make the short walk over to Damien's house. Well, I guess you can't really call it a house. It's more of a manor. 
state. Okay, is this a manor or is this a, like is this an estate? An estate would have proper grounds to match the domicile. So cute when you say domicile. It's a manor. Okay, what makes it a manor, though? God, the Gothic architecture looms over the other home in the Corsa. I walk past a couple of gargoyles guarding the front door and look around for a doorbell. There doesn't seem to have be one. Ground these nuts! Eh. Yuck. <laughs> Ew! Ew. We are adults here, okay? We're about to go into a manor. We have to be proper, okay? Proper? I pull a large ornate carved bat overhead door knocker back, and a hollow sound echoes throughout the house as I strike it against the door. I wait several moments before the door slowly creaks open. It's a little creepy, but I enter the home and take a few steps into the foyer, noting the oil portraits of whom I assume are dead relatives hanging on the wall. As I am admiring them, the front door slams behind me. H hello Silence. An oil lamp in the corner flickers dimly, casting ominous shadows against the wall. Why do I feel like all these people in the paintings are staring straight at me? Why is it cold in here? Where's Damien? Aaron! Pleasure to have you in my home. He's gonna eat me! I look up and see Damien standing at the top of the majestic staircase in a walking candle holder. Oh, with a walking candle holder. Why the fuck is this dude? What's, uh, what's with the door slamming shut? Oh, sorry, there's a draft. The door was creaking open when I knocked. I accidentally left the door unlocked. And the creepy oil painting? I like oil paintings. Right. Right. Please, let me show you around. Okay. Damien leads me around his house, showcasing his parlor, sitting room, auxiliary sitting room. What the fuck is an auxiliary sitting room? What is this? have sandwiches i love sandwiches what what is this i don't know what this is what's an auxiliary i need to google this i'm googling it it's a sitting room but off to the side of the main sitting room so it's like a nook No. Because is it like the same? Oh, God, I fucking give up. And a parlor again for some reason. Why is there two parlors? That's weird. Auxiliary? No. <laughs> Glemon is still on this. <laughs> Lemon is still on the auxiliary. <laughs> the fucking Julie. Google says to pronounce it. You're using the wrong Google. <gasps> Oof. I didn't know there were multiple Googles. Like cranny. Oh, like a crane. What's a cranny? Do I need to Google this? Well, I'm not going to use Bing. <laughs> or Microsoft Edge. Oh, my God. Fuck no. This is one of the older homes on the block. Yes, but nowhere near as old as the architecture might suggest. <laughs> Through extensive renovations, I have been able to craft a residence that is both historically accurate to the Victorian period and 
and equipped with the anemones of any modern dwelling. We walk past the door carved in bumper stickers, caution tape, and black parade poster. Did they listen to My Chemical Romance in the Victorian era? That's my son's room. You know how the rebellious teen years are. Onward, onward. That, that's to see more. We reach the door at the end of the hall that Damien opens with a flourish. And this is the library. Sunlight streams from floor to ceiling, arched windows. The walls are lined with packed bookshelves and even more books are scattered over the period appropriate furniture. Damien is clearly really proud of this room. Just wants to hear the D. I, I may, maybe. All right, squad. I'm going to leave it there. I've been streaming for four hours, you guys. What the fuck? That's ridiculous. It's a solid letter. It's not. It's not. It's not. Solid D. A. All right, you guys. I'm fucking tired. I would love to battle about English with you guys, but I don't understand English. So, yeah. That's accurate. That's fair. That's very fair. All right, I'm going to go, we're going to go over. We're going to go over to rock a mummy. I have to download it again, Woody. She's playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla. This is a threat. Oh, damn. Thank you guys for coming and hanging out with me and playing and playing the games. I forgot what game I was playing for 10 seconds. Thanks for coming and hanging out while I play Dream Daddy. Wait, we need to think of a different freaking thing. Um... I don't know. Fuck it. I don't even know. Yeah, Dream Daddy. That's the fucking right message. Dream Daddy. I love you guys very much. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, we might play Pelea, um, or we might play Lost and Random. I'm not sure yet. Um, either way, it's going to be chill. It's going to be a hangouty, listen to music, maybe type stream. Just hang out. I just want to hang out. I'm tired. There's a lot of shit going on. I like wish everyone a good night except people that put cream and coffee. <gasps> All right, we gotta leave before we somebody ensues violence. Good night, everyone. Sleep very, very well. Have a good night. Wait before Witty fucking kills everyone. <laughs>